what kind of game can we expect today? Well, this is a real pivotal game for both these two teams, Barry. Both are coming off close losses to tough teams, losing to UMass or St. John's, and of course the Towson game against uh, for Rutgers. So it's going to be a game, I think it's going to be a very pivotal game. We're going to see a lot of attempts by Rutgers to get the ball to their midfield. Uh, they're going to try and run their second midfield, I think, is going to be a very key success to, to today's game. Kerry, let's talk about Rutgers. We look at their schedule. It's been kind of an interesting season. They have played tough opponents uh, like Princeton, Navy, Johns Hopkins. Three of their losses have come against teams that are ranked in the top 15, but they went out on a West Coast road trip, scored a lot of goals against the teams that you don't normally associate with lacrosse. Well, yeah, that could be misleading, Barry. Their losses are to quality teams, and you can't deny that. Two and three goals to uh, some of the top teams in the country. They went out west. They did very well. Tom Hayes was real pleased with the success of the team out in the west. They're uh, really helping, as a matter of fact, to push lacrosse out in the west, and that was the real purpose of this uh, trip. Kerry, you mentioned the lacrosse uh, midfield unit on this fine Rutgers team, and of course you've got to talk about a guy that's third team All-America last year. He's having a super year, Greg Rinaldi. Well, Greg Rinaldi is their shooter, Barry. Their leading scorer from last year, third team All-American. He does it all for him, uh, for Rutgers. And they're going to be half, St. John's is going to be have to be very conscious of Greg Rinaldi. He can break the game wide open at any time. He's got a very high shooting percentage, and when he takes shots on goals, Barry, they seem to score. Rutgers also has a very tough defense. They've got big boys, uh, three boys over 6'3", a fine goaltender we'll talk about later. For St. John's, of course, they've struggled offensively a little bit. They did play well in their last game against UMass, uh, losing a tight one. And a young freshman who has delighted the folks here by the name of Brian Bouget has been playing very well. Well, Brian has really been a very pleasant surprise for Bill Miltenberg. He's done an outstanding job as a freshman. He's quick. He's got a good stick. He sees the field. He really p penetrates defenses, which causes a lot of problems for defenses as it makes them slide and opens up other men. So he's really got a very promising future, I think, for St. John's. St. John's will be boasted by the return in the starting lineup today of Vinny Rossati, who was their high scorer from last year. He's been bothered by shoulder surgery. In fact, he'll be starting for Brian Bouget. But the key test will be defensively if they can stop the Rutgers team. Carl Reuter returns with both coaches in just a moment. You're watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's LISN. Scott Moore on defense. Why should you make Apple Bank your bank? To find out, just look inside. You'll find people who care, like regional manager Jamie Hoffman. At Apple Bank, our people are concerned about what happens to your money and to you. We're committed to our customers and the community. Impressive game against Towson. Well, it was a tough loss. Uh, it was two evenly matched teams, and uh, we are playing on their home turf, and uh, they got a little momentum in the last quarter. And, uh, they took advantage of their opportunities. We didn't, and uh, that's the way it went. How do you approach a game coming off a tough loss, going against a team that's pretty much been in a slide, having lost their last five now? Well, we don't look at it that way. We know St. John's has had similar situations than we have, and we have two good teams playing today, and they're both uh, sort of struggling a little, and uh, it's going to be a matter of who you know, comes to play today. What kind of game can we expect from the Scarlet Knights? Well, we're going to try to uh, maintain some kind of uh, ball possession, take good shots when we have our opportunities, uh, try to uh, do a good job in the defensive end of the field, and just play hard. All right, Tom Hayes, good luck in today's ball All game. Right. Thank you, Carl. All right, let me turn around here to Bill uh, Miltonberg. And, Bill, we have talked about it. It is a, it is a five-game slide. Right. But uh, maybe a little bit of a boost today uh, starting Vinny Rosati. He'll help. He played in you know, our game against UMass the other day, and he was an impact for us. I mean, the kids, the team wanted him back, and he's that type of a person. He is a leader on the field, and he's a leader off the field. Going into that UMass game, the offense was struggling, scoring only three goals against Loyola, three goals against Post. Then you scored eight. Uh, what do you have to do to get that offense going and continuing on the rate that you scored against UMass? I just think it's a matter of the kids playing together and looking for each other. Sometimes when we get behind, they start to be played like individuals as opposed to team members, and that's what, that's what has hurt us, realizing that we have played five freshmen so far this year. Bill, is this a pivotal game for the club? It is, definitely, yeah. And what do you want to do today? Obviously, you want to score more goals, but what kind of game do St. John's want to play? We would like to run. You know, we feel with Vinny back, we're capable of running, so that's what we're going to try to do. All right, good luck in today's ball game. Thank you very much, Carl. All right, Bill Miltenberg, Tom Hayes, the coaches, and I'll stay tuned, Barry and... Thank you very much, Carl. We're just about set to go and getting ready for the face-off, one of the finest face-off men in the country for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And that young man uh, is by the name of Lou Facilli, number 33, percentage of 87%. He's wearing the red, and he'll be facing off against Kenny Sherman of St. John's. Kenny has had a good season, not quite as good as he had last year, but he is a fine face-off man in his own right, and last year did well, although Rutgers won the game 10-7, but he did well against Fusilli. 
But the battle will be in the midfield. You can see the strength of Fusilli right off the face off there, Carey, as he comes up with that ball. That's a good start for Rutgers, Barry. And uh, let me tell you something. Against uh, Towson, Fusilli was 19 for 19 in faceoffs. Uh, I think that's almost unheard of for a faceoff man to win every faceoff uh, for against a quality team like uh, Towson State. Unlike many of the midfield specialists, faceoff men, he will stay on. He has scored 13 goals working with Greg Rinaldi. Number eight as they work it behind. 17 is Tortorella. Number 20 is Andy DeSico, a power-driving attackman, guarded by Alex Brennan. That'll be a good matchup there, a key one for St. John's. Although Rutgers' uh, attack hasn't scored the big goals lately, it's been their midfield coming up with the goals. Falling down is Scotty Moore. The pass now to Grinaldi, and he shoots, and Lobosco will have to come up big, makes the stop, but it will still be Rutgers' ball. Lobosco had 17 saves in the 7-3 loss to Post. Played well against UMass, this young man from West Islip. Well, uh, you know, Sal Lobosco uh, has got a good experience right now, Barry. He's worked a lot on his uh, play out of the cage, and he's really has improved as a goalkeeper for St. John's. The look for Rinaldi went by him, recovered by Scott Moore from West Islip also, and in close, the shot fired wide by Lou Facilli. Lou is a 6'1", 203-pound senior from Rochester, and it'll still be Rutgers ball. An interesting note, Barry, that we should see uh, some good play here. Scott Moore and Sal Labosco played on the same high school team at West Islip and graduated together uh, three years ago. They are fine players out there at Suffolk County. This is Pete Tortorella, who has the best stick handling ability on the club. Had three assists against St. John's last year. 12 goals, 27 points. Again, looking for Rinaldi, who's a midfielder, but he plays in the crease uh, just about all the time. And that's really one, one of the reasons why he gets his great, excellent uh, shooting percentage. And here we had a good clear by St. John's, bringing the ball downfield uh, under uh, without too much pressure by the Rutgers uh, defense. We'll set the St. John's attack for you. Number eight is Russell Hilton as it goes behind and off the stick of number 20, David Graham. And Rutgers will get the ball back. But Vinny Rosati is starting today, and that should be a big help to this club, this senior from Elmont. Well, Vinny certainly is a catalyst for the St. John's team. Uh, he really, uh, as a last year's leading scorer, really helps their offense. He gets it on track. He's a senior. He lends some stability. And, of course, you can't uh, discount his experience. Kerry, this Rutgers team is, uh, was a very young team last year, and they went 8-5. and five. They're a very patient, conservative team defensively. They just don't make too many mistakes. Well, you know, they do have a lot of experience, Barry. Uh, that's one of their strengths. They feel and the, here's an unforced error, and they're going to give St. John's an opportunity here unnecessarily uh, by the St. John, by the Rutgers uh, clearing team. Vinny Rosati will drop the ball off to number 10. That's Matt Grandinetti, the six-foot junior from Beth Page, one of their leaders in midfield. He'll run with Chris Johnstone, the good-looking freshman from Chaminade, number 18, and Walt Gerbinowitz. The lookout in front, looking for number three, Brian Bouget, but it was checked off his stick and recovered by the big stick over there. Mark Moreau, the All-American defenseman, he's a dandy, number 34, as he tried to clear it upfield. However, St. John's will get it back. That's two mistakes so far by the Rutgers defense as we look at their goaltender, John Schmunk, a uh, six foot and 80 pound sophomore from Fairlawn, New Jersey. And as a sophomore, Barry, uh, John plays with a tremendous amount of poise. He doesn't get rattled. He was a high school All-American. He really has uh, done a great job for Tom Hayes' Rutgers uh, the Scarlet Knights. He had 32 saves, a school record against Towson State in that 9-6 loss last Saturday night. A real heartbreaker for Rutgers. They were right in that game till the final minutes. And he's only giving up six uh, six goals a game average, Barry, which is uh, which is excellent. Of course, part of that you got to attribute to their great defense. No score early in the first quarter. Barry Landers along with Kerry Gluck as St. John's moving up on the play. Good check in front as Grandin Eddie tried to get the shot off number 10. Bouget trying to come up with the ball along with Hilton. As they scramble for it, Chris Johnstone over there, number 18. And finally, uh, trying to get it on the carpet is David Graham, who normally plays the crease attack, and he'll just throw it back toward the sideline. Trying to get control of it is Walt Grabinowitz, and he nicely kept it in, Kerry. That was a good effort by St. John's right now. I, right now, I think they should slow it down a little bit and work it patient. Yeah! And there's the shot right up top. Russell Hilton, the 5'7", uh, senior from Rensselaer, gets his 10th goal of the year. He's the leading goal scorer. Quite a story of this young man who's come back from cancer, had lymph cancer, had to sit out a while. And we saw him last year. He's a good one. And look how open Russ Hilton was. Uh, really, really, Russ Hilton is a very dangerous uh, player for St. John's. Uh, Rutgers has got to be conscious of him. Can't give him that kind of room because Russell Hilton will put the ball in the net, as we saw right there. He was the uh, player of the year three years ago when he played at, uh, at uh, Hudson Valley Community College. He really knows how to score, and uh, he's really done an excellent job for this uh, St. John's team. Fusilli and Sherman to face it off here. You've got quickness against power and strength. The Fusilli again wins it. He's won 21 in a row, this guy. 
What an impressive stat that is, as you said earlier, Kerry. He had it checked out of his stick, and we get a whistle, and we have an offside call. It'll be against St. John's. It'll be Rutgers' ball. Russell Hilton and his uh, his uh, intensity to check the stick of of uh, Facilli stepped off uh, out of bounds and rather into the offensive zone. So it was a offsides call against uh, St. John's. Officials, by the way, working today: Ray Buckley, Tim Murray, and Michael Corrigan, or Corcoran rather. Three fine Eastern officials. What nothing. St. John's with the early lead here as uh, Rutgers now works the ball behind. DeSico, number 20, cut off. They, uh, talking to uh, the St. John's coaches, their defense has improved dramatically since that Hofstra game, Kerry. They gave up seven goals to post, played well against Loyola, and played pretty well against UMass as we have a flag on the play. Right, they have done a very good job defensively. Uh, they feel their experience, their young players are beginning to mature, and uh, they're really coming on, according to Bill Miltenberg, as we saw the flag thrown, and we'll see Rutgers go man up. Let's Sal talk about Bosco. Sal Labosco, because he too has come on, although that save percentage isn't anywhere he, where he would like it. He'd like it around 70%. But he is a good one, and he's the kind of goalie that will make the sensational saves at times. Right. He's done a real, really excellent job working himself out of the cage as we take a look at Tom Hayes, the head coach for Rutgers. Former Suwanaka star, was a star at Rutgers, and has done an outstanding job at his 15th year. Man up, they've been sensational, Rutgers. They have scored 19 for 55, so they have done a good job this year. But hard to tell. Some of those goals might have come on that West Coast road trip. As they look to work it down low here, they'll swing it back on top. Hard shot blocked as it was fired over there by number 30, Scott Moore. Scott Moore, of course, is the son of Larry Moore, the former West Islip coach. That's right. And Larry uh, is here today. Sure, Larry was a uh, varsity soccer coach over West Islip for a while. Did a great job with their soccer program. Nice look in front, but the pass was too high. Recovered by Rutgers. They're having trouble with some of those uh, balls. They haven't been that sharp in the early going, Rutgers. Snyder, 44 for St. John's, able to work it free, and Dahlman with that clear cross field. And Hilton will try to get it to David Graham, but it's picked up alertly by the goalie. And he'll clear it downfield, but out of bounds, and St. John's will get the ball here. Schmunk did a nice job coming out of the cage, Barry, but you know what Rutgers got to do right now? They've got to eliminate some of these unforced errors. Uh, they're making too many of them on the defense. With their experienced defense, that, that shouldn't really be happening. And one of the things Tom Hayes was uh, really wanted to try and do is get off to an early lead. You know, it's important when you're on the road to establish yourself very early on, and right now Rutgers hasn't yet done that. Penalty is over, so the teams are all even. Hilton, his 10th of the year from Grandinetti to give St. John's the 1-0 lead at the three-minute mark. And St. John's on the attack right now as they isolate here and uh, let them work one-on-one. -on -one. Chris Johnstone, the freshman, dropping it off. They like what they've seen of Johnstone, six goals. Here's Russell Hilton working behind against the big stick over there. Hilton spinning on the crease. Grandinetti tried to get the shot off, but it was blocked. We get a whistle. And we have a crease violation against St. John's, one of their players stepping in that area. Let's talk about the violations around the crease. Kerry, for those of the fans who may not be sure, what indeed is a crease violation and what happens? Well, the crease is the area that uh, surrounds the cage, and of course that is the uh, goalie's territory. Offensive players are not permitted to cut through the crease, but yet the defensive players are. And if we can, we'll try and catch it. Here's the replay. We'll see Grandinetti cutting down low on the cage. You see him right on the crease. He steps on the line, and once you're on the line, that is considered a crease violation, and that turns the ball over to the defense. I thought we might have seen Vinny Rosati. Which line, Kerry? There are two lines there, the blue and the yellow line out there. The blue line is the crease area, Barry. All right. A little difficult for the folks at home, and good comment. As we are underway with play resuming here, Rutgers trailing by a score of 1-0 as they work it into the midfield. Rutgers averaging 17 goals a game, but a bit misleading. Uh, those goals, a lot of them came against weak opposition. The look out in front, nice knockdown. Andy DeSico was right up on the crease there. 16 goals, the youngster from Bedminster, New Jersey. And he was stopped right there. And he was in close, too, and that's his favorite area, Barry, playing it right on. He's a finisher, but uh, unfortunately, Andy DeSico, uh, similar to what we saw at the other end, had a crease violation. He stepped in the crease, and so St. John's will take over. It'll be interesting, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Rutgers doesn't do too much gimmick defense here. Let's see what this ride will entail here as they're going to put some pressure on. Right, this is a pressure ride, goalie out of the cage. So they're playing man-on-man -man all over the field, trying to put some pressure, they feel, on perhaps the inexperience of the uh, St. John's team. And St. John's losing it, Brennan losing it, and trying to pick it up with the big stick over there. One of the midfielders with the long pole, Phil Buckley, number 35 for Rutgers. But St. John's moving downfield. This is Brian Fox, number six, the second uh, midfield unit. Mitty. Fox will run with Andy Bolger and Adam Gerber. And this is a, 
a unit that's got to contribute a little bit this year. They haven't done much offensively, and if uh, that's one area St. John's needs some more depth in. It's in that midfield. Well, you're right, Barry. Uh, right now, both uh, both coaches feel that the first midfield could be a standoff, and if that's the case, the second midfield is going to be the, the difference in this game. And as we look at the St. John's second midfield, they've really only contributed four points, one goal and, and uh, three assists uh, during the season so far. So they've got to become much more involved in the offense. On the other hand, Rutgers uh, midfield uh, second unit has done well. Loss of possession here and some good checking, so we'll have changes made. Both teams uh, substituting. Again, and if you're not familiar with the lacrosse, uh, you're only allowed five long sticks on the field at one time. So what basically you have is the close defense, the ones closest to the goalie, you generally play with the three long poles. And then in the midfield, when you're on a defensive uh, foray, you have two long pole middies and one short stick middy. What do you look for in a short stick middy playing on a defensive side? Well, he's the guy you're looking for to start a break. Once your goalie comes up with the ball, you're gonna, he's gonna be the man that they're gonna look for uh, to get them out of the defensive zone real quick. He's generally a, uh, has good speed, he's a good dodger, he can protect the stick real well. So he's the man that the long sticks are gonna look for to get the ball out of their zone. Right now, Rutgers making some changes right here as they've got the ball. The first midfield unit is in. Grinaldi, 8 more 30 as they swing it down low. Tortorelli is 17. On a drive out, he's a strong attackman. Flag is thrown on St. John's. Delayed call, and that shot fired wide from in close by Andy DeSico, but it'll be another St. John's penalty. And again, we're, if they're going to give these uh, Rutgers teams uh, a chance to give each man up, I think St. John's is going to have some difficulty defensively. Uh, they're doing a very good job on the close defense. DeSico has been uh, in tight, hasn't been able to penetrate Labosco yet, and it's a 30-second penalty. We saw the technical there. We'll see the push come across on the back, and that's where they called it, the push from behind, 30 seconds with possession. Rutgers 0 for 1 man up. St. John's man down has been 76%. They've given up 10 goals in 43 shorthanded chances. And how's that, Kerry? Is that a pretty good percentage, killing penalties? Yes, it's a very good percentage. Uh, Rutgers, though, as we take a look right now, Barry starts off in a 3-3. They cut down into a 1-3-2. They put one man behind, and they move their, their top guns up top. All right, as they work it behind, number 13 is the quarterback, Steve Luciano. He had replaced Matt Walsh, number 7, the Walt Whitman High School star, who has been starting a lot this year. This is Tortorelli, 17. Two men down on, on the crease. They work two outside. Penalty almost over. As they throw to the crease, and Grinaldi, who has that quick shot, rifles it home. He is murder around the crease. The All-American, the junior from Fayetteville, Manalis, up in the Syracuse area, comes up with his 17th goal of the year to tie the game at one apiece. And he took that one very nice, Barry, with his left hand. He comes across the crease area, and that's where we'll find him. There's the feed. He'll break out, coming across the crease, and there he is, wide open. Puts the ball over Labosco, beating number nine, uh, I believe, for St. John's. Here's another angle on the shot putting it right by Labosco. Jerry Farrell, number 43, is the guy who's going to be watching him closely. That's the matchup. Jerry Farrell, the All-American who played at Herkimer Junior College, was a teammate, of course, of Mike Lacrosse, the uh, outstanding attackman on uh, Hofstra. Now, St. John's wins the faceoff. They look to score on the fast break here. Graham, number 20, working behind. That was a good job by Kenny Sherman coming up with that faceoff and beating Luke Basile. Uh, that was Basile's first loss on the faceoff barrier in the last 23 tries. Well, he's got to do it sometime or other. Chris Johnston, number 18, races onto the field for St. John's to complete their midfield unit. As we watch number 22 working outside, Walt Garbinowitz, the junior who has had three goals this year. He's a power man. He goes to the cage, and the goalie couldn't locate that, but it is played behind the cage by his defenseman over there, number 34, and that's Mark Moreau, the All-American, dropping it off to number 32 here. And Rutgers with it. Uh, Tim Pritz is number 32. Tim Pritz, 5'195 pound junior, has a great stick. He's a bulldog, very tenacious kid out there. Now in midfield, number 33. Dropping it off more with a good look. Oh, and that was missed in close. Great look for Tortorelli, but he missed the uh, easy shot. He's missed a couple from in close. And that was really a great feed and great opportunity for Rutgers. They looked for each other very well uh, as they came down on the offense that time off the break. Right now, they'll work with their second midfield unit in there. Now we get a whistle. Now the first unit back in. Moore is 30, Fusilli is 33. Rinaldi will set himself up around the crease. Keeps moving all the time. Tough target to stop, Rinaldi. And when you keep moving like that, Barry, too, you wear down the defensemen. They get tired. They lose their concentration. 
They don't. They give you that little step, and that's all that you need with a guy like Ronaldo. All he needs is one step. Look at that battle, Fusilli battling the St. John's player, and we have a push on Fusilli, a loose ball push, and the ball goes over. Tom Hayes not happy with that call because St. John's will get the ball in this 1-1 game with 5:56 to go in the first quarter. But really, what happened there with Fusilli when he lost the ball? Used his one hand off the stick, and he was really almost warding off, and that was the call against him. And they'll, that'll give the ball over to St. John's. Good defense too by the Redmen. Daniel McEnroe, I believe, number 23, is the guy. The kid from East Islip did a good job here. And there we see the one hand off the stick. You see he's only got his right hand on his uh, on the shaft, and he's playing with the one hand off the stick, and that's what the officials call. Those East Islip kids are pretty tough, as we see the coaching staff talking to the young man. Right now, St. John's trying to get the ball across midfield, and they will. This is Bolger, number five, playing on the second midfield. He was one of their leading scorers last year on attack. They moved him to midfield, and Andy Bolger's got to contribute. Uh, in the midfield for him. Here's Grandin Eddy. Good defense, but he finds the open man and a beautiful score. Speaking of Mr. Bolger, he's the man right there. Number five coming up with the goal, Andrew Bolger, the sophomore from Holy Trinity High School in uh, Levittown. He's a native there, had 19 goals last year, only a second this year. Well, Andy Bolger scored the goal, Barry, but let me tell you, Matt Grandin Eddy had an excellent feed. Uh, one of his assets is that he really gets to see the field, and there you saw why he's uh, so dangerous, because he sees everybody. And look how open Andy Bolger was, but that was due to the feed by Mac Grandinetti. There's the second feed. Look at Bolger inside. Easy step up on the shot on John Schmuck. So it's St. John's 2 and Rutgers 1. Made me look like a prophet there. I told Andy Bolger must have heard me up here, Kerry. He sees the field well. Excellent shooter with either hand. And uh, he came up with a legal procedure call against Rutgers on the faceoff. I'll check it against St. John's on the faceoff. So it'll be Rutgers ball. 5.21 to go here in the first quarter. St. John's leading 2-1. to one. There's a look at Bill Miltonberg, former Delphi star. And has done an excellent job here. A record of 57-50 and 50 in nine years here at St. John's. Rutgers trailing two to one as they work now with the second midfield unit. Number nine is David Cunningham. Number 23 is Steve Locker. They're working in the midfield right here. And this is the area that they feel Rutgers has the edge working against the second St. John's midfield unit. They'll swing it around. Number 20, DeSico. Cunningham, number nine. Beeler has the best shot, number 22. Another ward off call. So Rutgers coming up with some penalties. St. John's has been aggressive, but smartly aggressive here. And uh, Rutgers committing some uh, penalties here. And they get the ball back, St. John's. One of the reasons why high school coaches really try to emphasize to their players to uh, scoop those loose balls with two hands on the stick so you avoid those kind of penalties. So you, you avoid those one hand off the sticks or ward offs. Right now, Rutgers has turned the ball over seven times. St. John's playing a much smarter game. Hasn't turned over any up until right now, unnecessarily. Uh, I want to remind you that today's game is being brought to you by Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. And by 8 Auto Stores, your ultimate car care store. Barry Landers along with Kerry Gluck and Carl Reuter here at Redmond Field on the campus of St. John's University. You know, I've got to admire what St. John's has done, Kerry, over the last years under Bill Miltonberg. They played an awfully tough schedule this year. They've lost five in a row, but they lost to teams like Yale. Uh, they've lost to Loyola. They've lost to Post. They lost to Hofstra and uh, UMass, so they've lost to five pretty good Division I teams. All quality teams, and uh, Bill Miltonberg is really uh, impressed at his schedule. Uh, he's really built it up, and uh, although they're one and five right now, they've lost to some really excellent teams. And you can't deny the Yale win over Cornell this past weekend, Barry. That's really got to be an upset uh, in the making, but uh, it really evens out the Ivy League. Uh, uh, league is a uh, very competitive and a lot of parity. St. John's playing well in this first quarter all around. They lead 2-1 to one after coming up with the ball here. Under four minutes to go in the quarter. Walt Karbinowitz, number 22, trying to work. And are they going to have a ward off here? A legal procedure delay of game against St. John's is the call by Ray Buckley down on the field. Uh, that's, a, that's a highly unusual call at this stage of the game, but I guess Ray Buckley felt that St. John's wasn't looking to attack the cage. You do have five seconds to go to the cage, and if you're holding the ball out too long, they'll call it. But it, uh, in this stage of the game, you don't get too many teams attempting to do that. I don't think it was intentional on the St. John's part. I think they were looking to just get their sticks on and off the field. But uh, in that, in so doing, uh, they held the ball out for too long. Well, right now, the second midfield unit in for St. John's. Uh, number one out there is Andy Gerber, along with Andrew Bolger, number five. And they'll be on the riding team right here. 
Now you'll notice again, now St. John's is really uh, laying very far back there in their uh, deep zone ride. Uh, they don't want to give up the midfield too fast and uh, too early to Rutgers. They're going to let them work it out slowly and not let them get the fast break. So here's Rutgers moving it downfield, trailing two to one. Big problem for St. John's Carey has been in the second quarter. Late in the second quarter, we saw it against Hofstra just about every game. Uh, they've made mental mistakes. And speaking of another unforced error, there's another one by Rutgers. Boy, I'll tell you, Tommy Hayes is going to probably blister his club after the first quarter. Say, wh where are you guys? Is this a wake-up call? And it's, you can't blame it on a long trip like after the West Coast, but uh, they're making too many, uh, too many unforced errors, Barry. Uh, for a quality team, they uh, they really have uh, they've got to eliminate these mistakes. Well, their losses have come to awfully good teams this year. They lost to Johns Hopkins, the number one ranked team, by three goals. They lost to Navy, the number six team, by four, and to Towson, the number eight team, by three. And here is another turnover here. So both clubs are getting the bug here. Must be spring fever carry. The temperature's in the 70s out here. Maybe these guys are uh, thinking they're, of other things. They're not used to playing in such warm weather, Barry. They're used to the cool, although Rutgers, uh, they should be used to it from playing out west. So in this turnover-filled game right now, 3.07 to go, Rutgers, Scott Moore from West Iceland will play it. Or is the potential to be an All-American? He's got those great first two steps, Kerry, that you love to see in a midfielder to go along with that cannon shot. Number 30, Scott Moore. So far, they've cut him off pretty well. This is DeSico, their leading goal scorer. Over to Moore. That's Moore, 30. Nice look to the far side. St. John's playing man-to-man -man here. They've got a man open at the top, Fusilli. Here's Moore. Seco over to Fusilli, and he rifles it wide, but Rutgers had a backer, they'll retain possession. Really, St. John's is, uh, has packed in a little bit, Barry, into, a, uh, into more of a zone right now than the man-to-man. -man. You'll notice nobody's pressuring behind the cage. They're giving the man behind the cage a lot of room, and they're letting them take the ball and try and shoot it up top. Good save, Lobosco robbing his former high school teammate Moore on that shot. Moore gets it back again. And the key to beating the zone, Barry, is they've got to be very patient. They can't look to uh, run and dodge or try and uh, Rush the offense. Be patient. Move the zone. And trying to uh, roll it in was Tortorelli as he collapsed in the crease, and he's going to be called for a crease violation right over there. So good play there, uh, but we're going to have a violation call. And a player is hurt down there for uh, St. John's. One of the uh, defensemen, I think, uh, who put the hit on Tortorelli as he came around the cage, and he might have just landed on his shoulder. I can't quite tell, and we can't quite tell who it is right now. Uh, here Maybe we'll see Alex it on the Brennan. replay. Yeah, right there. That's Alex Brennan. That's the guy who's right now lying down. I think he landed on his left shoulder, and it might be uh, it might be the shoulder that's uh, giving him some trouble. Could be a tough loss for St. John's. He's a 6'2", 190-pound junior from St. John the Baptist, a big red head who's very aggressive. Yeah, did a great job in the early going against Duke. Covers uh, the best individual player in the opposition, and they could ill afford to lose him. He showed his aggressiveness right there, Barry. Uh, he really played very, plays very hard, very tough, and uh, again, that's going to be a loss for the St. John's uh, defense if they do lose him. And in talking uh, to the St. John's coaching staff, especially before the game, to Franny McCall, who coaches the defense right now, and he says, we're thin back there. We, we really don't have a whole lot of people there. They can ill afford, as you said, to lose him, along with uh, Bill Snyder. Those are the two most physical defensemen they have. And the other thing about Alex, of course, is that he does have very good speed. He has the speed to be able to play one-on-one, -on -one, and that's really why they do put him on uh, usually the best attackman, as you said early on. Don't forget, in a couple of weeks, we'll resume our coverage of college lacrosse. Uh, yours truly, Barry Landers, along with Kerry Gluck and Carl Reuter, will be at Adelphi University. As Adelphi, who had that big win over Hofstra, will be taking on Harvard. Harvard currently ranked number nine in the country. And the following week, it'll be a battle of Long Island uh, uh, powers, the old rivalry of Adelphi against Post Kerry. We'll have both those games. So we'll be back right now as they work on the injured player. You're watching college lacrosse. I'm Second time now, right now, Barry. Rutgers has put on their pressure ride. They're forcing uh, St. John's to make that long cross field pass. And as we watch as they work on Alex Brennan on the sideline, St. John's has not been able to complete that long cross field pass, and that's where the turnovers are coming. Kerry, how would you uh, how would you try to clear then? What, what differences would you make in their clear? Well, right now, as long as they're playing with the pressure, I'd look to try and uh, bring down perhaps one of my attackmen to help out on the strong side and bring over one of the other short sticks uh, from the defensive zone into the offensive zone. All right, uh, Moore's pass bounces high in the air. Lobosco corrals it. 
And the goalie from West Islip will drop it off to Billy Snyder. Billy Snyder, another one of the Long Island players for St. John's. In fact, almost their whole team is from Long Island. He's out of Holy Trinity in Hicksville. Here's Rod Dahlman, Harold Dahlman, also out of Holy Trinity. No surprise, Bill Miltonberg teaches at Holy Trinity, so he's got a lot of the boys there. Oh, break here perhaps for St. John's as it was alertly scooped up. And they'll work it outside. Rosati is number 11. Remember, he had the shoulder surgery, their leading scorer. He's in the ball game right now. He's a guy who can control the ball offensively when he's out there. Here's Hilton losing the ball on a check. Rutgers trying to pick it up. St. John's trying to retain possession as they scramble for it on the far side. Rutgers comes up with it, but now St. John's takes it away on a good check. Good aggressive ride by St. John's. Hilton with a beautiful shot surprises the goaltender. John Schmunk didn't look like he was ready on that one, and Hilton fires from the crease and blasts his second of the game, and St. John's with a 3-1 lead. Russell Hilton is unbelievably quick, and he showed that quick shot uh, right there, Barry. The feed comes in very nicely. Hilton left alone right up on top, and he's got the one-on-one -on -one shot, and he let it go real quick. And you got to give Rosati a lot of credit, too. He got the assist on that, and that was very crucial right now. That puts St. John's up by two goals, and I believe we're just under a minute, or the, minute, the clock should be on the field. 14-18 carry is the time of the goal, so we're down to 42 seconds. And Here's a key face-off for, for St. John's. If they can win it here, they should be able to go off with a 3-1 to one lead. They've been uh, had problems in this area, giving up a goal late in a quarter, late in a half, where they've sort of mentally gone to sleep at times. And that's something that Bill Miltonberg is trying to emphasize with his young club. Concentration is the name of the game, Barry. You lose that concentration for a split second, and you give up the goals. Good check over there and by number three for St. John's. Uh, that was Brian Bouget to come up with a turnover. They work it to the big guy here with the big stick. That was Kevin Casey, 47. He couldn't control it. Too bad for St. John's here. They would have had, they should have been a little more patient, Kerry, and gotten some sticks uh, on the field. They might have had a chance to score. But maybe Rutgers on the transition can get a goal here. Blocked in front nicely. Can Lavasco pick it up? Yes, he does. And that should do it with six seconds left. And St. John's is going to get out of this first quarter, Kerry, with a 3-1 to one lead here as they go downfield. And the ball is touched by the goalie, and the quarter comes to an end. And it, it came off uh, St. John's finished the quarter very impressively, Barry. Uh, looking like they're playing with a lot of poise. Rutgers, I think, as we look back on the first quarter, played uh, with uh, a lot of intimidation, and they didn't really play very strong and aggressively, threw the ball away too many times. And I think right now we're, uh, we're going to see a real good game. And uh, let's take it to the break right now, Barry. After one, it's St. John's 3. Rutgers 1, you're watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's LISN. Tom Hayes would be the first to admit that, and I think Bill Miltonberg has got to be very impressed with the way his young team is uh, playing aggressively, and unfortunately right here we see a, uh, a, a face-off violation against uh, St. John's. Kenny Sherman not happy. He feels that the call should have gone against Facili of uh, Rutgers, but uh, the official called it against uh, Sherman. And when you consider that uh, Rutgers won just about every faceoff, including those that the illegal procedures were called on all but one in the first quarter, they only have one goal, so they weren't able to capitalize on that. Well, you know, that's interesting, because we mentioned earlier, Barry, that they won 19 of 19 against Towson, and one of the comments Coach Hayes said was that we won 19 faceoffs, we had the possession 19 more times, and yet we didn't take advantage of it. Well, they try to take advantage here. Tortorelli working behind the cage. He's got DeSico 20 setting a pick. Here's Moore. Excellent open field player and good looker. That shot was blocked, taken by Rinaldi. They've done a good job on Rinaldi so far. Keep an eye on Parker, 43. They're trying to double him down low. Look out for Moore. He'll rifle it. Good block again. St. John's very aggressive in their defense. Oh, and a shot from the crease and a score. So it's Rutgers, Steve Luciano, number 13, coming up with his eighth goal of the year. Luciano, a six-foot sophomore from New Canaan, Connecticut, who's their leading assist player, has great eyes, and that time he showed a pretty good shot. And Scott Moore finds Luciani in tight on, on goalie Sal Labosco. Uh, Luciani is big and strong, and he's very dangerous once he's in tight. And here we'll see a second angle, the broken play. Here comes the slide, and that's why Luciani was wide open right in front of the crease. It's his eighth goal of the year. He has 17 assists. He leads in that department, a shooting percentage of 26%. He's a big, strong kid. Luciano's eighth from Moore at 46 seconds, so Moore has picked up two assists so far. As he assisted on both goals, he now has 16 points. He's got Moore. Sherman and Fusilli again facing off. As expected, Rutgers has dominated the faceoffs. 
Rutgers now back within one. Can Sherman hustle for that ball? No, he wasn't taking the faceoff this time. It was number 24, Adam Graves, who took the faceoff for St. John. But they came up with the ball. And this is Rosati, number 11. Good one-on-one -on -one player and an excellent feeder. Let's see if Rutgers a little more aggressive defensively as they are driving the men out toward midfield, falling down, getting back up is number 12, Kenny Sherman. Now check that, number 13 out there, Kevin Paglino. He's out for the first time. Rutgers trying to get to that loose ball. But they fell out of bounds. A hustling effort over there by Rinaldi. He's their leader in ground balls and leader in a lot of departments, this young man. Well, he does it all for Rutgers. Uh, Barry, he's the leader, uh, team leader, spiritually, as well as on the in the goal area as well. You know, Kerry, he's similar to Albert Ray, a young man from Long Island, played at Copeg High School, who was an All-American at Rutgers. And uh, Tommy Hayes, who coached both of them, thinks he's very similar. Well, uh, Ray was an outstanding uh, player uh, when in his high school days and did an excellent job for Rutgers. A strong, big kid. He could run. He had legs. Uh, he was dangerous all over the field. Now St. John's leading it 3-2, to two, looking to regain that two-goal lead. Good check on that shot. And it'll still be St. John's ball. Recapping the scoring in the first uh, quarter, Hilton got his 10th from Grandinetti at three minutes to give St. John's a 1-0 lead. Rinaldi tied it with his 17th from Moore to tie the game at one apiece. And the Redmen uh, took a 2-1 to one lead as uh, Bolger got his second from Grandinetti at 9-37. They made it 3-1 to one when Hilton got his 11th from Rosati at 14-18. And then here in the second quarter, Luciano was 8th for Rutgers for Moore at 46 seconds to make it 3-2. to two. St. John's fighting Rosati had it checked off his stick. And what can you tell about Rutgers here in the second quarter that they were doing that they weren't doing in the first? Here's a steal by Hilton. Oh, what a save by the goalie as he tried to go down low. Big save that time from the goaltender, John Schmunk. John Schmunk came up real big on that last play. Barry Hilton was inside one-on-one -on -one with an open cage, and Schmunk just, uh, just did his best effort to come out and, uh, and put it away. And he comes out and stuffs Hilton. There he is, one-on-one, -on -one, and he does an excellent job. He goes down low. Even Hilton gave him the fake high, and he still went down low, and Schmunk did an outstanding job. The difference that I, and in response to your question, Barry, is I think you'll see right now Rutgers is playing much more aggressively defensively. They're, uh, they're really pressuring the ball much more than they had before. Uh, first quarter, they were much more laid back. They weren't really pressuring. They weren't uh, being aggressive at all. And I'm sure at the quarter break, uh, Coach Hayes had some words to say to, those, to his players because uh, they really were playing very lackadaisically. It's only the second save of the game for John Schmunk, who came in with a sensational 79% save percentage. Remember, he had 32 saves, this young man, against Towson State. That's remarkable. And when you think of the number of saves, he's only a sophomore from Fairlawn, New Jersey. How about the level of high school play in New Jersey? Has it improved dramatically over the last few years? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, along when you speak about the high school play, uh, you, you really talk about the high schools on the whole East Coast, uh, from Jersey, Virginia, the Baltimore, Long Island, New York, uh, all along the East Coast. And high school uh, in, in Jersey is really good. All right. We've got a break in the action. We'll be right back. You're watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's LISN. Halftime. Good defensive play right there by St. John's, and I think it was Russell Hilton doing the job over there against number nine, David Cunningham, the midfielder. Russell Hilton did a great job riding and forced Cunningham out of bounds, and that's where you got to give the credit right now, Barry. The Redmen are doing an excellent job riding, and they're really giving uh, St. Uh, Rutgers a lot of problems coming out of their own zone. As we mentioned earlier, the St. John's coaching staff pleased with this young club as they try to develop a program that will be very competitive in Division I. They're committed to it. Shot fired wide by Grandinetti, uh, by Garbinowitz, rather. But St. John's had a backer there. It'll be St. John's ball. St. John's showing a lot more patience offensively, Kerry, uh, than they did maybe against Hofstra the last time we saw him. Well, I think they're doing a very nice job offensively. I think they're doing a very nice job all over the field, Barry. And, uh, you know, this is what Phil Miltenberg felt early on there. The youth is beginning to start to mature and take, you know, and take hold here, and that's what we're beginning to see. Work it down low. This is Brian Bouget, the freshman from Sawanica, who looked awfully good against Hofstra. Pass intended for Bouget, however, behind him. Rosati throwing that one away. Now he tries to take it away from the big stick over there of number 34, Mark Moreau, the All-American. But Moreau, very heady guy. He doesn't awfully cough it up, does he? No, he doesn't. And you know what? Uh, we also we should mention uh, Tim Pritz really is what caused that turnover. He did an excellent job uh, checking Vinny Rosati, and that's where that for he forced the error of the misthrown pass. Tim Pritz, number 32 for Rutgers, young man out of Bridgewater, New Jersey. Now Rutgers will make some changes here as they send uh, David Cunningham, number nine, in the ballgame with Doug Beeler, number 22, 
and Steve Locker, number 23. So their second midfield unit in right here. That's uh, number 23 with it, forced to go back, Steve Locker. How about the ride here of St. John's, Care? Well, again, St. John's is playing in a 3-3 in a, uh, three, three zone. They're not pressuring all over. They just wanted to, they don't want to give up any fast break. And that's what uh, I think Bill Miltenberg is very pleased with, the way the riders have been doing. Uh, they've been doing an outstanding job. Beeler has the best shot on this midfield uh, unit, number 22. He scored already seven goals. Defenseman falls down, and they make him pay. Number 20 coming up with a goal, Andy DeSico, who's their leading goal scorer. It's his 17th goal of the year. He's big and strong, the lefty, and he ties the game here as Brennan falls. And that's, you know, you, you, know, you can't count on that, but certainly uh, they took advantage of it. Rutgers, Andy DeSico, very smart, saw the defenseman go down, and he took his shot. He was right in on uh, Labasco. Uh, had, the, had the easy shot once Brennan went down. So the game is tied at 3-3. DeSico unassisted at 4:07. Andy DeSico comes up uh, with his 17th goal of the year, the junior out of Bedminster, New Jersey, who's a power attackman at 21 goals last year, and he's off to a great season this year, 17 goals already. Fusilli wins that face-off. Again, this time he faced off against Greaves, so Sherman not facing off the last two. Greaves came up with the last face-off. Rutgers looking to take the lead for the first time. This is Luciano, who's their leading assist man, number 13. Out to Scott Moore. He'll work with Fusilli. Fusilli's very strong, 6'1", 203. Tortorella. Working against Andrew Draghi. And Lobosco comes up with the ball. Yeah, we're going to have an interference An interference, call. yes, against St. John's. So that will give the ball back to Rutgers. Little things that Bill Miltenberg says we can't do too often against quality clubs. And there's Jack Cayley looking on, veteran coach, so many years at East Meadow. And Long Island connection with Fran, Fran McCall, McCall right, uh, right there And there's there also. Mike Bolger, their former leading scorer, who's coaching, doing a fine job helping. Can't ask for a better coaching staff than they've got here at St. John's. The experience that Bill Miltenberg has on his staff, Fusilli. Off to the crease. Oh, and that one went in. Luciano coming up with the goal. That was uh, quite a shot there. Lobasco could not get it. It might have been deflected. I think it was a deflection, Barry, right off Luciano's stick. They were looking to feed it into Luciani, I think, as we'll see. Here's Luciani, right standing right in Lobasco's face on the crease. And there's the uh, feed into him, and it hits off. Whoa, I'm sorry. It may not even be a deflection. That looked like it was intentional. He caught that one in over the shoulder shot. And I don't think Labasco was expecting that shot. I think he was expecting Luciani to turn around and take it. And I think he caught Labasco shorthanded. Three straight goals have given Rutgers the 4-3 to three lead and a timeout taken here by St. John's. Luciani uh, with a high scoring percentage. And let's take timeout right now. Timeout on the field. 10.02 to go in the second quarter. Rutgers leading St. John's 4-3. You're watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's LISN. The goal that DeSico got, you got to just uh, attribute to an unforced uh, mistake in the falling down by Alex Brennan. Now but Kenny, that, they're doing real well. Sorry, Kerry. Now Kenny Sherman came up with that face-off, so momentum may be swinging back to uh, St. John's. Face-offs, uh, Rutgers 6 and St. John's 3 now. And so those are the statistics as St. John's gets its first midfield unit in. Number 22, Walt Garbinowitz out of Beth Page, former star football player along with Matt Grandinetti. This is Vinny Rosati out of Elmont. Starting his first game today after coming back from shoulder surgery. Brian Bouget, the freshman from Sawanica. Russell Hilton over John Stone as they'll go back toward midfield here. Draghi kicked it across, but here's Rinaldi picking it up. Watch him go to the cage. Nice look by Rinaldi, and that one deflected back out toward midfield. Good play. And M.G. Hollingsworth, number 19, getting that shot off. And it was a good save by Labosco, too, Barry, because Hollingsworth let that rip. I mean, he let a cannon out. Hollingsworth has five goals, seven assists, 12 points. Rinaldi couldn't get it, but his teammate picks it up. That was another oh. good save by Labosco on that real low shot. Over to Moore. Looking for Rinaldi, he couldn't handle it, and St. John's will come up with a loose ball here. As coming up with it was Walt Garbinowitz. He leads them at ground balls. Here's Snyder, 44, with a big stick. 
Nice look on the crease, and oh, a goal by Russell Hilton to tie the game. What a great shot by Russell Hilton. That was just a superb shot, and a great effort by St. John's leading the break, coming down with the long stick. Bill Snyder did an excellent job. He got it inside on uh, Hilton with his back to the goal, going away from the goal, an underhanded backhand shot. Uh, you know, these are incredible shots. They're showing their skill, they're showing the stuff. Here comes Snyder. He's lead. He sees Russell Hilton come across the cage, and there's the backhand underhand shot. Puts it right by John Schmunk. And again, I think John Schmunk didn't expect the shot to be taken there. Kerry, 20 years ago, what would coaches have said if they had players taking shots like that? Uh, 20 years ago, Barry, players would not have been able to take those kind of shots because the sticks today permit them to be able to do that. 20 years ago, when they played with these old wooden uh, sticks with uh, just, just the lacing on the shafts, they couldn't do that. Sherman won the faceoff again. Dolman dropped it off and a score. St. John's regains the lead. Russell Hilton, goal number four. And we've got a dandy going right here. And that's two straight face-offs. One, another nice play this time by the defender to, to get it down quickly. That's Rod Dolman and uh, the young man from Holy Trinity High School picking up an assist. And a great job by Kenny Sherman coming right off the face-off, giving it over to Hilton. Hilton on the wing area, and he puts it in for a second goal in just a matter of seconds, Barry. So St. John's scoring quickly. We've got now seven minutes, or make that six minutes and 48 seconds uh, gone here in the second quarter. And how quickly momentum has changed, Barry, from going from uh, Rutgers early on in the quarter, and right now St. John's coming back in a, in a frenzy. And look at little Kenny Sherman come up with his third. Fusilli with a hard check to uh, knock the ball loose. But Sherman coming up with those two face-offs, and they've been able to score directly off face-offs, which is something Rutgers hasn't been able to do. Maybe uh, Bill Miltonberg, having taken Kenny Sherman out and replacing him with Graves, did something to Sherman, got him a little bit uh, upset, so to speak, and I think he's playing, I think you saw playing with a lot, lot more intensity on the face-off. Right now, Rutgers le uh, trailing 5-4. They briefly led it 4-3, and then St. John's came back with two goals very quickly. Luciano draws a penalty against St. John's. They work it outside. The second midfield unit is in. Locker, 23, with Beeler, 22. Look out on top. And firing the shot wide was Steve Locker, a 5'9 sophomore from Westfield, New Jersey. He's got an exceptional shot, has three goals this year. He was the high school player of the year uh, a couple of years ago in high school. And uh, I'll tell you, Rutgers has recruited well in their own state. Yes, they have. They've uh, done some outstanding, uh, gotten some outstanding Jersey players, Barry. And of course, as a Jersey State school, one might expect that. Rutgers right here, Barry, will be up for one minute on a slashing penalty. Uh, three penalties, I think, so far in the game, all called against St. John's. And St. John's has done a lot better job killing penalties lately. Against UMass, they shut them out. And they've cut down on the number of penalties they've taken, Kerry, which is very important because in, in lacrosse, you keep giving teams man up, good teams are going to score 30% of the time. Well, I think uh, against Post, I think that was part of the problem. I think they were manned down for uh, over nine minutes in the post game, and that's like playing one quarter, man down. Now we have a whistle, stopping play. Let's see what the officials are going to call here. There must have been a problem with the clock, Barry. I think it wasn't running down, or they might have not started it on time. Seven. So it was officials uh, calling the timeout. 7-12 remaining on the clock right here. It's still a man-up situation in effect. Oh, the clock is counting down. There you see it here at Redmond Field. As we said, don't forget, uh, Jack Kaiser, the athletic director here at St. John's, will be on with Carl Reuter at halftime. Of course, people here at St. John's still mourning the passing of Katha Quinn, the exceptional uh, young woman who was the sports information director here, who was so helpful to all of us covering sports here. They wound it down to six. Well, they keep uh, taking it away, Carrie. So apparently the clock, somebody had forgotten to, uh, to start it. They, uh, they're guesstimating, I think, that approximately 30 seconds uh, expired on the penalty. Last two goals, let's quickly recap for you. Hilton, his third of the game at 12th of the year from Snyder at 640, and then eight seconds later, off the faceoff that was won by Kenny Sherman, Hilton got his fourth of the game, 13th of the year, from Rod Dolman at 648, giving St. John's the lead at 5-4. Rutgers still man up here. Rinaldi gets it back over to Sherman, uh, over to Amour. Luciano directing the attack from behind. Tortorella shot from outside, wide, but it'll still be Rutgers' ball. We'll keep an eye. Draghi is the man in the box, and he should be coming off shortly. 
Remember, it was a one-minute penalty. Luciano behind the lookout for Rinaldi. Good check that time by Dahlman, 41. And Rutgers able to hold it in. Come on. Now Bouget will replace Draghi as the man to come back on, but it doesn't matter. Moore scores to tie the game at 5 all. Scott Moore is going to cannon go with that right-handed shot, Barry. He gave a little head fake and then blew by the defender, and as we'll see, he just puts it right in the back of the cage. Here he's driving to his right. He'll take his shot, moving to his right with the right hand. He winds up and takes that power shot, puts it right over the left shoulder of uh, Sal Labosco, off stick high. Here's the second look on that. I think that was the defender um for st john's i can't quite pick up his number but uh that was scott moore did an excellent job driving to his right more unassisted his 11th goal of the year he's had two assists already here's a kid who sat out all of last year had a wrist injury a shoulder injury numerous injuries the first two years in his career but uh, he worked so hard uh, and he's a potential all-american according to uh, the rutgers coach tommy hayes and i know his dad's very proud of him larry moore who's here uh, today I think St. John's right now is contesting, Barry, that the penalty had already expired and their man was in the box for, for, uh, for a couple of seconds longer than he should have been, which could have been a crucial factor on that because the goal did come in from the top, and that's where the uh, man would have gone. The penalty would have been taken by Draghi up top. Well, you saw Tim Murray over there uh, talking it over with the scorer's table, but I don't think any change will be made. The goal will count. And certainly not going to wipe out the goal. It's their second man up goal. We told you Rutgers had a good man up. And Bill Miltenberg's team right now deadlocked at five apiece, but he's got to be pleased with the way his club has played here in this uh, first half, Gary. Oh, I think very much so. Uh, I think they're doing an outstanding job, and I think the important thing for, for St. John's is to maintain that same intensity that they've had going through the first two quarters, or quarter and a half. Rutgers has out uh, shot St. John's, 19 to nine. Fusilli battling with Sherman. We're gonna get a violation on Fusilli. Let's see. That's what Kenny Sherman thinks. Yep, it's Guess gonna be a hold on Fusilli. Let's go down on the field, I believe. Uh, our colleague, Carl Reuter, is standing by, so let's go down on the field. Here's Carl. All right, Barry, thanks very much. I walked over to the scores table, and the Rutgers people all of a sudden looked away, and they said, oh, no, that's not us. We're not running the clock. It's the St. John's people that are running the clock. From now on, they're going to take the penalty time off of the scoreboard clock. For whatever reason, they're messing up on that little penalty clock, the little red one that ticks down. The girls over there having problems, but the Rutgers people right away said, not our problem. That's St. John's on the clock. Barry? Chris Johnstone picking up that loose ball, another flag. And it's gonna be against the Rutgers club, number 36, Jim Eckert, the big 6'4", 209 pound senior. Very similar to uh, Morrow, who was injured in uh, 1988. He's gonna be called for slashing. So what a great opportunity for St. John's uh, to score a man up here. Chris Johnstone took two, uh, two slashes, as we'll see it on the replay. There's one right there, and then here comes uh, Eckert again across the, the helmet. And we may even see another one, but uh, he really took two. And we'll see Johnstone will have, uh, has drawn the penalty and will put uh, St. John's in the man up. First time for uh, this game. Johnstone will work it now. Number 18 in the midfield. He has an excellent shot, has six goals, the freshman. That's Grandin Eddie, 10. 34 is Cantwell, a man up specialist, Billy Cantwell, working it outside. Bouget behind, good feeder. Down in front, Grandinetti scores, and St. John's regains the lead six to five. And that was an excellent, well-taken shot by uh, Grandinetti. And you also have to give a lot of credit on the feed, too. That was Brian Bouget who got the uh, the assist. That was an excellent feed by Bouget. Here he is coming around the cage, Grandinetti coming down from the top uh, of the uh, man up play right down to, the, uh, to take the shot. Matt Grandinetti, the young man who was the number four scorer last year, a three-year starter. All-American candidate here, deceptively fast, has the best outside shot, primarily righty, and we saw a little bit of that good outside shot right there. And he is tough to stop, Barry. He's really got, uh, he's, he's got good speed, he's got a long stride, as we said, and he's got an excellent outside shot, and he showed it right there. Six foot, 180 pound junior out of Beth Page, gets his seventh goal of the year from Bouget at 9.35. Rutgers coming up with a face off, and they'll get their first midfield unit in. Here's Scotty Moore, dropping it off to Rinaldi. Can't give him room. He's been held so far to just one goal. This is the cage on that one, but Rutgers had a man back. And you know, as you look at uh, Russell Hilton play a lot, he uh, uses his free hand uh, considerably, Barry, almost to the point where there could be uh, a ward off called against him, but they're not calling it, but he uses his free hand really well to protect the stick. Young man who was a transfer from Hudson Valley Community College, as Kerry mentioned earlier, three years ago, was junior college player of the year. 
Here's Fusilli working against Parker. Or Farrell, rather, 43. And a quick lookout hit the pipe. Tough luck for Rinaldi. He was in close, and it hit the pipe. Should have had that one. And he had Labosco beat. He'll try again, says, OK. I'll try it with my left hand, and I've got the one to tie the score. And if at first you don't succeed, try again. And that's what exactly what Rinaldi did. He took that second uh, shot with his left hand, took it very well low, uh, low on Labosco. Here we see it on the replay. Here's a nice feed in the, and into the left right hand uh, into the left hand puts it on the near post and they had two men on him there Kerry. yeah they doubled up on him they slid over off the uh, feed right over under Rinaldi but they got there they got there too late and uh, he took a he took a well shot well taken shot he finds a way to get get open I guess all the great scores down around in that crease area know that knack that little intuitive thing how to find the open space and then get the quick shot off well he's got a really excellent stick he has a real quick stick and that's an asset when you're in on the crease Rinaldi second of the game, 18th of the year from Fusilli at 10-20 at St. John's. And they're trying to defend Rinaldi again. That one was blocked. And this time he showed he could take the shot with his right hand, Barry, going away from the goal with his right hand. He took that one very well. So Rinaldi showing a lot of different, uh, a lot of different right? shots, uh, showing that he can go both ways. And Tom Hayes is, uh, I'm sure, much more pleased with his, uh, his team this quarter than he was the first quarter. Tommy Hayes has brought his team into three NCAA appearances in 75, 82, and 86. Despite having a great tradition, uh, they've never gone to the Final Four carry. Rutgers. In, well, uh, lacrosse. Yeah, you know, getting there is tough, Barry. Uh, it takes a lot of a lot of a lot of good teams don't get there. So, uh, you know, no, I don't think that's a criticism. Well, they indeed have had a tremendous program. They were one of the first schools to play lacrosse collegiately back in the 1880s, I guess, as far back as that. Now we'll have a ball retained by uh, Rutgers here. Game is tied. We've had a lot of scoring here. 6-6 with 4:04 to go here in the uh, second quarter. Moore swinging it over now. Fusilli. Again, St. John's blocking a lot of the shots. They're not getting through to the goal. A unwise play there as uh, Rutgers comes up with the ball. Making the mistake there was number 23, Daniel McEnroe, the freshman out of East Islip. Out on top, Fusilli. Moore with a hard shot. Again, that shot was blocked. This time it was Snyder who got a piece of it. But it'll still be Rutgers ball. And they'll make changes now in the midfield. They'll put their second midfield unit of uh, Beeler, Cunningham. And now we'll also have a timeout as uh, Steve Locker was heading onto the field as well. So timeout. Jack Kaiser will be joining uh, our friend Carl Reuter down on the field for the halftime interview in just a few moments. Right now we're down to 320. will be man up. So this will be an important penalty for the St. John's uh, man down uh, defense. Let's see if they can hold, hold, the, hold the defense tight. And especially with Rutgers having scored on two of three man up situations already. So this could be momentum wise a key point in the game, Kerry, with a minute 11 to go. Rutgers held to one goal in the first quarter, has scored here six in the second quarter. Leading by a goal, Tortorella. They work two men behind. Here's Moore, has that cannon shot. Let's see if they set him up or Rinaldi on the crease. Tortorella looking back to Moore. He'll fake the shot. Draghi trying to check him. Another flag thrown against St. John's here. Good defense by Draghi, I think. And uh, unfortunately got called for a penalty as the uh, flag went down. Andy DeSico missing the shot. A one-minute call. Rutgers will be now two men up. Rutgers should have gotten rid of that ball a little bit sooner, uh, Barry, unless they didn't see that flag thrown. Once that first uh, penalty is on, you're down one man, as soon as the second penalty is thrown, you'd be better off taking the shot, even if it goes wide or high, and get yourself two men up for a longer period of time. Absolutely. Unlike hockey, where you can get the extra skater on, you can pull your goalie. You don't often see them do that here uh, in, in, in lacrosse. But can you do that, Kerry? Could they have pulled their goalie at that point? And uh, any time the other team would have touched the ball, the, the whistle would have blown. Any time the ball would have been touched or, or dropped, the other uh, the whistle would have blown. Uh, we only have about uh, 45 seconds, so uh, maybe 25 seconds in the first penalty is expired. So they're going to be man up for a good. Well, here comes one man in, so they'll still be man up for about 30 seconds. So it's 55. six on five with 34 seconds to go in the first half. Luciano working behind. Oh, Tortorella couldn't hang on, but he recovers. We'll keep an eye on the clock, 25 seconds. Tortorella behind a Luciano. Nice look and a beautiful setup in front. 
and Rutgers takes a two-goal lead. His scoring was Doug Beeler, the junior from Jamesville DeWitt High School, upstate New York in the Syracuse area. He comes up with a goal as he cut down from the midfield and came up with his eighth goal of the year. And we'll take a look at it. Here's uh, from the feed from behind Pete Tortorella passing the ball behind the cage. And here comes Beeler across the cage, go, moving from right to left. He takes it with his left hand, puts it into, over the left shoulder of uh, Sal Labosco. He's a very smooth player, Doug Beeler, very similar to Chris Moore, who really controls things on that uh, first midfield unit. An excellent shooter, has a knack for finding the open man. They tell us he's a good passer, but he found the net right there. He was bothered by a shoulder injury last fall and uh, didn't play a whole lot of the fall in preseason. Usually Doug uh, usually takes those big outside shots, Barry, and uh, here we saw him go in tight, so he showed that he could move in the crease area where there's a lot of traffic. All right, St. John's trying to stop Rutgers. Oh, they almost came up with one there. Jim Naslonski firing from in close. Boy, wouldn't he love to get one here with, I'm sure, some family and friends watching. I'm sure he would. And that was a nice look, too, uh, by Naslonski. He let it go real quick as he's on the crease, and the freshman didn't waste any time getting, uh, getting a shot taken. Uh, and it was a well-taken one. And we have a timeout on the field taken by Rutgers. Good I'm call. sure they're going to try and uh, set something up right now as the clock winds down with only nine seconds. They're going to look to get one shot off. Recapping uh, the goal, Beeler, his eighth from Luciano at 14.40, man up. So they've scored three man up goals so far. And St. John's going back to a problem area. That's uh, preventing teams from scoring man up on them. But, Kerry, speaking of Jim Naslonski, you got to think back to the, his outstanding brothers who played for Farmingdale, John. Naslonski was one of them. Uh, they, they were all Americans at Rutgers, great players at Farmingdale, and they've just continued in that family tradition. Oh, it's an outstanding uh, lacrosse tradition that runs through the Naslonski family, and I'm sure that uh, Jim is going to see the same kind of success as the older brothers did uh, at Rutgers. He's getting off. He's a, you know, got a, uh, a good opportunity right now at Rutgers, and all I think he needs is a little bit of experience playing Division I. It's a big step going from high school to Division I, and once that experience comes along, he's going to do real fine. Well, he certainly has the size, 6'4", 195, pounds and we remember him from the playoff game last year what a tremendous Nassau County championship game we televised last year with Farmingdale going up against Port Washington and of course his brother Jim Naslonski's brother Bill is the all-time Rutgers leading scorer in one season he had 81 points and those are tough shoes to fill but I'm sure Jimmy's gonna he's gonna give it a run for the money uh, you might we may also very well remember the game uh, Farmingdale playing Ward Melvin oh, yes. championship and unfortunate incident that uh, Jimmy Naslonski wasn't playing uh, yes. up to par with an injury uh, so that was a tough way to finish out his career but a promising one here at Rutgers let's see what they've set up here with the closing seconds here a push and the ball will go over to St. John's so with three seconds left Redmond will get the ball so whatever play Rutgers had designed there goes for naught and Rutgers should go to the locker room with an 8-6 lead here. St. John's will obviously try for a clear downfield and hopefully uh, try to get something toward the goal. Right, they're just going to cheap it down. We have a little uh, rough play going down on the crease on the other end of the field. <laughs> they're trying, you know, the offensive players are trying to get themselves in good position. Defense doesn't want to make any mistakes. Uh, they're pushing and shoving in the crease area trying to get their position. And that'll do it for the first half. Rutgers out scoring St. John's 7-3 in the second quarter. So those stats that we talked about at the very outset come true for both teams. Second quarter has been uh, Rutgers' best quarter of the year. They've now outscored the opposition 40 to 12. Let's go down on the field. Carl Reuter with Bill Miltonberg. All right, thanks very much, Barry. Always a coach will tell you a goal in the last minute of any period's got to hurt. Right, the thing that's hurting us is that we're letting them go man up on us. We're making penalties that aren't really necessary. We're trying to be a little bit too aggressive, trying to take the ball away rather than play position defense. That's what we've told them. That's what we have to correct. We can't let a team like this go man up on us. Of course, they're going to score a goal. Bill, you mentioned the aggressiveness. Also, one thing you were stressing in the first half, also, you wanted to, your clears to be more aggressive. They seemed to be a little bit lax, and then later on they pushed up, and that's when you forged ahead. Right. Sometimes we change our style. Sometimes we want to delay the game a little on and then if we see the opportunity to get a transition, then we want to take it. All right. Good luck in the second half, Thank Bill. Call. Okay. Bill Miltonberg, the coach, his team is trailing by the score of 8-6 to six to Rutgers. When we return to Redmond Field, I'll be back with St. John's Athletic Director, Jack Kaiser. Right a well-taken shot, but Matt Grandinetti is known to have an outside shot. He's got, he's really tough up top, and he's got an excellent shot, and he'll take it. All right. The scoreboard shows 8-6 Rutgers on top, and when you look at the halftime numbers, one number that is really outstanding, Carrie, is the shot 
shots on goal. Well, you can't deny you 28 shots for Rutgers, nine shots for St. John's. That tells you a lot about the game. It tells you a lot that Rutgers is dominating the game. They're controlling the game. What I think is a credit to St. John's right now, having taken only nine shots, they've scored on six out of their nine shots. So they're taking advantage of the play whenever they come down the field. They're making, uh, they're making good shots, and they're capitalizing on their offense when they're in the offensive zone. All right, quickly before we go and start the second half, if you're Bill Miltonberg, you want your team to be aggressive, but not that aggressive where Rutgers is always man up. Right. You've got to take away you know, the, the difference between being overly aggressive and being aggressive. Right now, St. John's is so anxious and so intense that they're committing penalties. That's one of the things they've got to they gotta, they gotta stop committing the penalties in the second half and play six on six. You can't play six on five and win. All right, so the score at halftime, 8-6 Rutgers on top. Second half action upcoming right after this timeout. Good, tough defense by St. John's. Not being overly aggressive, as we said earlier, to commit the penalties, but just playing tough position. So St. John's off the turnover, will get the ball trailing. They had the early lead, led by uh, two goals a couple of occasions. But Rutgers, with their man-up situation, being very effective. Scored three man-up goals, and they hold a two-goal lead here. Sal Lovasco, number 22, faced a lot of shots in that uh, first quarter. Came up with eight saves. Interestingly enough, St. John's didn't have uh, many shots on goal uh, on uh, his alternate. Uh, the opposite guy, uh, John Schmunk, had only three carry. Right, he only had three saves. Uh, Schmunk really wasn't all that busy. And Labasco also only had uh, eight saves. So we really didn't see too many shots on goal, Barry. And those that were for uh, Rutgers, most of them went in. So both clubs turned it over on their first possession. As you see, Tommy Hayes, who was a great player at Sawanica. He and Tom Flatley are very good friends. Tommy Hayes, a record of 110 and 68. They haven't had a losing season in 12 years, Kerry. That's, uh, that's a nice tradition for Rutgers. And of course, they've been in the uh, lacrosse uh, tradition for a long number of years. They lost an All-American goalie in Jim Gilman, and they've been very pleased with John Schmunk this year, the sophomore. Moore, who's had a goal and two assists, number 30. Nice move to that get away from. nice roll. Got away from Farrell at time, 43. DeSico, Tortorella, or rather Luciano. This is Tortorella, number 17. Rap check there, trying to work it now is Tortorella. Rutgers, after a very sleepy first quarter, woke up in the second quarter. Fusilli. Watched by Brennan with a long pole. Rinaldi still being watched by Farrell, 43. And let's see, we get a flag. And we have a uh, call made against uh, Rutgers. A one-minute slashing, oh, one slashing penalty. And it'll go against Pete number 17, Pete Tortorella. Number 23, Dan McEnroe, was the man who uh, was slashed by Tortorella there. Good job by McEnroe on the defense. Played very tight, played it, and played it, played it very smart, too, Barry. McEnroe is just a freshman from East Islip, an outstanding athlete. And he's a big boy, 6'3", 205, one of the biggest players on St. John's. One of the things St. John's lacks is size. They get out-muscled by a lot of teams, especially their attack is quite small. But it doesn't matter for this guy playing behind either Bouget or Hilton, tiny players. Bouget working the man up. An important situation here for St. John's to convert, Kerry. Definitely it is. This would really help them momentum-wise, Barry. Get them on track to start the second half early. Man up there, one for one so far. And they've done a good job, man up. Today, and they do it again. Bouger with the goal. And big one indeed for uh, St. John's. They're now within one. And I was going to say that their man up situation has not been good all year, Kerry. Only eight for 41, around 20%, which isn't very good. That's a little low, but there uh, we saw Bouger. Uh, he did it all by himself, Brian Bouget. You, know, you notice the defenseman slides off, expecting him to dump it. And Brian, very alertly, as he saw the defenseman take that step back, he went right to the cage and put it right by John Schmunk. Well done, well taken shot, well placed, low to the off stick side. Bouget unassisted, his ninth of the year, man up, 59, make that 159 the time of the goal. And here's a kid who was not highly recruited out of Sawanica High School because of his size, Kerry, only 5'6", 145. A lot of big-time schools stayed away, and St. John's is delighted they were able to steal this kid. Well, he's got excellent field sense, Barry. We saw it there, and that was an excellent, uh, uh, you know, an excellent example of that good field sense. Adam Graves is pushed by uh, the Rutgers player, and it will be St. John's ball here, I believe. Let's see what the call will be. 
No, it's going to go the other way. Graves heading pushing off. It'll be a pushing John's violation John's against St. John's. So Rutgers will get it. Back to a one-goal game as you look at Scotty Moore out of West Islip High School. Moore has excellent moves in the open field. He's a fine athlete. Has a goal and two assists so far today. DeSico working against Brennan, number nine. Fusilli over to Moore. Rutgers a patient team offensively. They're not too fancy. Moore lets go of the shot. Still be Rutgers ball. Rutgers' biggest lead has been two goals. That's the biggest lead for either club, Kerry. So it's been a very tightly contested game as you see the Rutgers sideline intently looking on. It has been close, Barry, and these are the kind of errors <clears throat> that have made it close. First quarter was just uh, one error after another, and I think the second quarter both teams settled down a little bit, but Rutgers taking advantage. But uh, it has been close. The momentum has shifted constantly. Tortorella with a nice move, but he lost the ball as he was cutting. Well, Bosco will clear it over to uh, the young man number 23, Daniel McEnroe, who you were talking about earlier. But St. John's losing the ball there. And that's something they cannot afford to do too often against this Rutgers team. Now, one of the things, though, of course, uh, this is very pleasing to Tom Hayes. One of his objectives during this game, I would think, would be to keep the uh, short stick of St. John's off the field. And they're doing just that right now. They're keeping the uh, St. John's short sticks on the sidelines, keeping those long sticks on. And uh, you know what, Barry? After a while, those long sticks start weighing on you. And of course, the longer you're, uh, you're running, and it's tougher on those defensemen. Good point, Kerry. Back out open now for the shot. And it was fired wide was number 23 open that time. Steve Locker out of Westfield, New Jersey. 5'9 sophomore who has scored three goals this year. And Jerry Farrell and Alex Brennan all over the shooter. Rutgers getting a lot of shots off, but they've been off target. They've missed the net a lot today. As yes. you see, uh, Tortorella heading to the sideline. We'll have a change up front for Rutgers. They're out shooting St. John's almost three to one. And yet the goal difference in the game is only two. Cunningham dropping it off, and again, that shot goes wide. And so it was Locker again, number 23 shooting. Second midfield unit in, Cunningham, Locker, and Beeler. Beeler scored a big man-up goal late in the first half to give Rutgers a two-goal lead. Luciano, number 13, swinging it outside to Cunningham. Snyder gives Luciano a lot of room over there. Brennan checking against Tortorella. Rinaldi's not in the game right now. Getting a little bit of a rest in midfield as the rain continues to come down here. This field, the AstroTurf field, drains well, so it shouldn't be a problem as far as slipping, unless we get a torrential downpour. And that one deflected by Lobosco. Rutgers retaining possession here. They've had possession most of this third quarter. Cunningham. Tortorella. They want to rotate it. You can hear Tommy Hayes all the way up here shouting, rotate it, rotate it. Well, because you know why, Barry? There was a double on the defense. And when the double came, the weak side defenseman slid over to cover the man behind, which left the offside wingman wide open. And that's why Tommy Hayes quickly wanted it to rotate the ball to hit that wingman and get him because there was nobody on him. Sometimes the game looks awfully easy up here, doesn't it, Coach? Oh, Clark? yeah. Let me tell you, it's <laughs> not easier when you're in the stands. 10.22 to go here in the third quarter. Rutgers leading St. John's 8-7. Redmond trying to snap a five-game losing streak. St. John's has played uh, well in some of these losses. They'll next play Villanova this Saturday, and then play Harvard on Wednesday, April 12th. Other local games against Adelphi, April 19th. And that will be their next and only local game remaining. They've already played Hofstra and Post. Here's Rosati, who has not done too much so far today, and he could come up with some big goals. Russell Hilton, who's had four working behind the cage. They put their best defenseman, Morrow, on him. Morrow big and strong. It's like a Mutt and Jeff situation there. You really can see the size there. That was a nice feed, nice look by Hilton, too, cross cage. And missing was Grandinetti as he had cut down from the midfield. Now looking to clear will be Schmunk. Throws it away. He had Tortorelli on the far side. No, it was not Tortorelli. He had uh, one of his defensemen over there, number 27, Tom Badger. And he threw it away. Not now, very John Schmunk coming out of the cage. Uh, and again, Tom Hayes, unfortunately, not pleased with the, uh, the error 
uh, committed there by Rutgers. But you got to give, again, a lot of credit to, I think, the St. John's ride. I think they, uh, they're creating some of the problems for Rutgers clearing the ball, and John Schmunk breaking the ball up, also getting hit afterwards by Bouget and uh, one of the other St. John's players. So he's out of that cage. He's just as a susceptible to getting a hit as anybody else. Good point, Kerry. St. John's looking to tie it here. This is Rosati driving, dropping it off, looking in front. We get a whistle. And let's see, do we have a crease violation? Oh, uh, well, we'll have St. John's and the man up now. We had an illegal check committed by Rutgers uh, against, uh, I guess it was Rosati who had the ball and was driving the cage there. So uh, Tommy Badger, number 27, with the illegal check, used his elbow, and he is nailed for the penalty. Now, remember, St. John's has scored two man-up goals. And uh, for a unit that had only been operating at 20%, a little under 20%, against a good defensive team. A chance to tie it there, two for two man up. They'll work it outside. St. John's trailing by a goal. David Graham, number 20, working now outside. Usually he's a crease attackman, but he's playing outside in midfield right here. Now I would think he's gonna cut down, Barry. I would think that we're gonna see them rotate. That's Graham right now. Cantwell, 34, sending it behind to Bouget. Cantwell plays only on man up. Look in front, oh, and that was missed in front. They set it up inside for uh, Hilton. Cantwell on the man up team has an excellent shot from the wing, Barry. He's very dangerous over there. He's with the ball right now. All of his goals have come on man up. He's had three man up goals scored. Got a hard shot, a little slow from West Babylon High School. Kerry, you know him well. Oh yes, he was a very dangerous player all county last year at West Babylon. Thrown away, and they will not call that a shot. The ball goes over to Rutgers, so the man-up situation uh, does not pay off. There's nobody in the box. Teams are all even right here. And Rutgers will get it back. So, Kerry, very similar to the first uh, quarter here. Both teams a little sloppy, a little ragged in their, their offensive sets and uh, making mistakes, turning the ball over. And we've had uh, only one goal scored. Well, it seems that both teams uh, early on and right now in the second half area have come out not playing with the same intensity. Uh, maybe it gets the both Rutgers and St. John's take a little while to get into the game, but uh, they don't show the same intensity early on in the game uh, or the half as they do uh, through midway through each half. Schmunk, after they cut off Rinaldi, gets the pass back. Here's Moreau, the All-American defenseman, number 34. Rosati will try to move up on him. There's no time limit in lacrosse as far as getting the ball across, is there, Kerry, in terms of uh, 30 seconds or so, like in basketball, so they can take all the time they need. Won't be called, of course, for delay of game. Unless, unless the official believes that they're attempting to stall, stall intentionally. But you're right, there is no clock that's going to stop them out. St. John's, interestingly enough, was in a 10-man, and they were letting, they wanted to let Schmunk bring up the ball. Here's Rinaldi, bumped by Snyder, but recovered by Luciano on the far side, number 13. Luciano has done a good job setting up a couple of the goals today. Tortorella. That's Tortorella, 17. Lacrosse field to Moore. He couldn't catch it, but he scoops it nicely. DeSico, good look in front, and Rinaldi won't miss that. And Rinaldi doesn't miss many of those when he's in front of the cage like that. And of course, DeSico gave him a good feed. And guess what, Barry? I think you got to give a lot of the goal to Scott Moore, number 30. That loose ball that he scooped yep. up and just goosed over to uh, uh, to Doug DeSico, uh, Andy DeSico, that really made that goal. And here's DeSico feeding into Rinaldi. And once he beat uh, that defenseman that was forced to slide off of the crease, and Rinaldi was wide open. So Rinaldi, who had two goals against Towson State, and uh, is the All-American from last year, comes up with a goal to give his club a two-goal lead once again. Rinaldi out of Fayetteville Manilis High School. He scored four goals against St. John's last year. He gets his third of this game from DeSico at 7.51. Rinaldi had eight in one game back in 1987 against Bucknell. Rutgers trying to come up with a loose ball, and Rinaldi does. Rutgers has led by two goals twice in this game, and they lead by two right here. Moore with Rutgers on top, 9-7. 6.45 to go here in the third quarter. Hope you're enjoying the action on the Long Island Sports Network. Barry Landers along with Kerry Gluck and Carl Reuter. Fusilli. One of the few times we've seen uh, Fusilli go to the cage, Barry. And 
Pablo Bosco gives up a bad goal to Rinaldi. He gets his fourth of the year. He had a piece of that one. Should have been able to stop it, and that could hurt. Well, Rinaldi took him to the cage. Again, he showed uh, he can shoot righty and lefty. He swept to his left. He took the shot low. And again, I thought Labosco was in position. I thought he had a stick down. And again, I think he's just getting some unlucky bounces right now that are gonna that can hurt. You know, those are the kind of bounces when you feel you're playing good defense and your defense isn't doing a good job, and you give up those uh, those kind of goals that you feel that the other team didn't earn that we gave them to uh, you know to the other team. Pete Tortorella heading to the sideline. His club right now leading for the first time by three goals, ten to seven. And that last goal, Rinaldi is fourth of the game, 20th of the season from Tortorella at 8:31. Well, Rinaldi showing why right now he is a feared scorer. And why he was uh, All-American last year. And coming up with the ball, Rutgers right here. Number 23 is Locker. Rutgers uh, on the verge right now of uh, breaking the game open. They lead by three, and it's important for St. John's to regain the next uh, some momentum, and they won't do it here as the young man from Long Island back Walsh out of Walt Whitman High School in Huntington Station comes up with the goal, and I'm sure there are a few Walsh fans right here. He has 11th goal of the year, the 6-foot, 170-pound seat. He was very quick first couple of steps, and he scores number and eight. And watch this shot, Barry. He comes around the cage. He's taken Alex Brennan underhanded. He puts the ball right by Lobosco. Uh, a well-taken shot. He took Alex Brennan one-on-one, -on -one and... Uh, Surprisingly, I think, as we saw, uh, put the ball right by Labosco. And we'll have a timeout on the field taken by St. John's right now. Walsh's 11th goal unassisted at 8.51, and we've got a break in the action right now. Rutgers leading by four. You're watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's Long Island Sports Network. I wonder if I can get a car loan. Oh, I wonder if they'll give me a vacation loan. Join the Apple Bank family and you'll never have to wonder if you can meet your financial needs. You'll get a personal family banker, free, no bounce checking, and more. Join the Apple Bank family and feel good about banking again. Come in or call Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. The Coral House in Baldwin, overlooking Milburn Lake, nestled in a quaint rural setting, is Long Island's most popular dining and catering facility. You'll be seduced by atmosphere, indulged by... Back in the game, and they've got to come up with face-offs. They won't come up with a face-off, but they come up with the ball, but Farrell throws it away, looking for Rosati. And he should have been a little more patient there, Kerry. Yeah, perhaps, uh, you know, he should have uh, been more conscious of his midfielders and have been able to turn the ball rather than look to go to Rosati right now. So it'll be Rutgers ball. Scarlet Knight uh, looking to uh, win their fifth game of the year. Their only quality win, of course, came against Princeton. Their other three wins came against teams out on the West Coast. But they have lost to three very fine teams, three teams in the top 15, Johns Hopkins, along with Loyola. And now, the look in front, Lobosco knocked it down as Beeler was checked getting the shot off. One of the few times today, St. John's getting some transition. Yes, it is. Andy Draghi did it, uh, put the excellent check on Doug Beeler. Pass goes to the sideline. Will it stay in? No. Could not be uh, retrieved over there by the St. John's player. So again, Rutgers will get it back here, leading by four. Right now, I think uh, St. John's uh, Barry has to be able to get into the offensive zone and get the good shots, unless they have the fast break situation going to the cage. But on that kind of a situation there, they didn't have a fast break, and I think they should have slowed it down to get, uh, to get a, a play set to get on the scoreboard right now and take away some of the momentum. About five minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's been all Rutgers here in the last couple of minutes. And a score for Matt Walsh again. Nice look. He was wide open to the left of the goalie. And Matt Walsh gets his second goal, and the Walsh family from Huntington Station celebrating 12th of the year. And I think the feed came from, I could be wrong, but it looks like it might have been M.G. Hollingsworth who made the cross-cage feed. And look at how wide open uh, Matt Walsh was. He comes behind the cage on the weak side, and the St. John's defense was all ball side and left uh, Walsh wide open on the weak side. It was a good pass from Hollingsworth, who uh, generally looks to pass rather than score carry. He started a little bit on that West Coast road trip. He's a lot like Walsh. 
feeds uh, more than he scores. Both are unselfish kind of players. And Walsh so far on the receiving end of a couple of good passes for goals. And MG uh, showed why he's an excellent okay. feeder. That was a great pass going from uh, Hollingsworth over to Walsh. Those are the reserve attack that getting a chance to play here. So they are coming up big. Walsh is second of the game, 12th of the year from Hollingsworth at 9.53. Four goals in just a little more than two minutes for Rutgers. So they've uh, exploded offensively here. And St. John's defense seems to have sagged a little bit, Kerry. Right, I think they've lost a little bit of that intensity that they had through the first half. Here's a good clear for St. John's, though. They bring it up with the long sticks, and they did a good job getting the ball into the offensive zone. Now they set up their offense and get their sticks on the field. Harold Dahlman was the guy who did that good job, number 41. He'll head off into the defensive end of the field. Now Chris Johnston, number 18, will play in midfield with Matt Grandinetti, number 10, and Walt Garbenowitz, number 22. Russell Hilton working with Brian Bouget. That's Hilton, eight. Bouget, three. And Rosati, number 11, also out there. Wearing some special protection for that shoulder injury at shoulder surgery. Bouget working behind the cage awfully quick, and he draws a penalty here on the defenseman as he drew it on number 32 over there. Fritz is going to be called for the penalty, and now as the whistle blows, it'll be a man-up situation for St. John's, and... Boy, if they ever need a goal, it's right here, man up, as Tommy Fritz will head to the sideline. Had an injury, you can see his right leg bandaged up. He's a good one. Six foot, or rather five, 10, 195 pound bulldog, who was a part-time uh, starter last year. Here's the call. And here we'll see the penalty on Fritz, and there's the slash right there. Tom Hayes on the sideline, got his hands open and said, you know, is that a slash? Come on, ref, give me a break. But, uh, you know, he hit the guy on the shoulder, didn't hit him on the gloves or on the pads. Kerry, for new fans watching, what kind of, what uh, is a slash in terms of what can you do with the stick? It's legal, and what can't you do? Well, it's easiest to say is what you can't do. You can't hit the body with the stick. You can't take it over the guy's uh, shoulders, his back, his, his head, his legs. Any part of the body is really a slash. The only thing you can really check is the stick or the gloves. Okay, good point, Kerry. So we're man up situation here for St. John's. They trail by five goals. They're two for three man up. Bouget and Grandinetti have scored man up. Cantwell trying to rake it. Hilton, who had four in the first half, going after it. But Rutgers coming up with the loose ball here. Nice play as they get it here to number 27, who committed a couple of penalties earlier. And he'll bring it across. It's Tommy Badger. And a save uh, on Walsh from it close. And St. John's uh, Rutgers did a great job coming out of that man down, number 27. Tommy Badger leading the fast break, did a great job. And uh, here we'll see the feed going over to number seven, one-on-one -on -one with Labosco. Okay, Matt Walsh again. This time, this time Labosco stuffs Walsh and, and prevents the goal, but it was an excellent opportunity by Rutgers when they were man down, uh, getting a good shot on goal. You don't think those guys used to go at each other, Walt Whitman and West Iceland. Oh. Those, we, in fact, televised a couple of their lacrosse games over the years. So. And they still do. Both teams still have uh, outstanding programs. Gary, we'll be getting back into high school lacrosse next week, and a little later on, maybe we can talk about Nassau and Suffolk. We've got a game coming up next week as we watch Walsh play behind the cage. Good feeder. Had been starting most of the year. Did not start today with Luciano getting the start. But he throws that one away. See this battle as it comes toward midfield. Oh, hustling it was Rinaldi. Checked out of his stick. But well, ball stays in. Good aggressive play by both teams. Smart play by the Rutgers defense. I can't see. I think it might have been number 31. I'm not quite sure. 34 is where it was. Mark Moreau. Now, you, know, you see why he's uh, honorable mention All-American. Smart play. He just reached over the stick and just nudged it to one of his players. Flag against St. John's. Now as the ball is uh, thrown away, we'll have the flag and the whistle. An offside call against St. John's. That was Vinny Rosati who stepped over the line. That should be a 30-second penalty giving, uh, it should be uh, the offsides giving Rutgers the man up. But, I mean, there was a good aggressive play by both teams, and a very smart play, and uh, Rinaldi hustled to keep the ball in play. Moreau showed uh, intelligence, just nudging the ball, not looking to reach for it and step off sides. Kerry, we'll have high school lacrosse in our next telecast here on the LISN. JFK Belmore against Sawanica. You're watching one of the Sawanica uh, outstanding players here, and Brian Bouget. That'll open our high school coverage and we'll culminate it with uh, the New York State semifinals from Hofstra. So we've got a dandy high school lacrosse program
coming your way. Sawanica's traditional lacrosse goes back a good number of years also, Barry. They've won one of the one of the first high schools on Long Island to start lacrosse. I think Sawanica and Manhasset were the first two that played. Crease violation on 22 red. And that will be the uh, young man, Doug Beeler. So St. John's will get the ball. Still a man down, Rosati in the box. And again, Kerry, for the new fans, how is that penalty released? Uh, what ways uh, can it be released? Well, other than the uh, time factor, uh, the penalty expiring, you can only release the penalty once uh, your team gets the ball in the defensive box or your own offensive box, uh, the restraining line. Once you cross it over with possession, your penalty then can be released. Okay, so unlike hockey, when you're serving the penalty, it, it can end quicker than once you get the ball in the attacking zone. Right now, Lobosco will have no trouble. He's going to help clear. He'll come up toward midfield. Still a man down now. I think the penalty is just about over. Chris Johnstone will head onto the field. No. Nope. Johnstone is there. He didn't come out of the box. There is still a man in the box. Here's Johnstone, the freshman, driving toward the cage, and he scores! Chris Johnstone just came on the field and he drove right to the cage and the freshman, who they're very happy with, comes up with a goal to bring his club back within four goals. And uh, Chris did a really good job uh, scooping that loose ball and going to the cage. No one picked him up. Uh, the the uh, defender, number 28, Steve Berkeley, falls down, gives Johnson those extra couple of steps, and he just takes a nice uh, nice bounce shot, puts it by John Schmuck. I'll tell you, this kid is accurate with his shooting. He's shooting percentage 42%. He gets his seventh goal of the year. He's got great vision, plays on the crease, either hand, understands the game out of Chaminade High School. He would be smart coming out of Chaminade. Yes, he would. He lives at Massapequa Park. John Stone, his seventh, unassisted, 13-49. And the game is now a four-goal game, 12-8 with a minute and four to go. One minute remaining in the period. But Rutgers coming up with the face-off. Locker. DeSico. Rutgers has scored at the end of the second quarter. And that was a big goal, Kerry, that uh, gave him a two-goal lead going into halftime. He scored man up at that time. Cunningham in the second midfield unit is on. Here's Tortorella working against Andrew Draghi. And he's doubled behind the cage. There's got to be a free man open. There he was. Cunningham, however, missing from in close. And he cut down really well from the uh, into the crease area. He split the, ze split the seam of the zone and came down very nicely. Brennan finds the open man. It's Snyder on the far side. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Here's Garbinowitz who can run it upfield. He is a very strong runner. Penalty coming up here. St. John's is going to be called for an offside. Apparently they had too many men in the attacking zone, or is it going to be right? No, it's going to be a slash. Yeah, at midfield, I thought there was a slash on Grabinowitz. It was a slow flag, Barry. I don't yes. think he threw that real quick. And uh, it'll be a one-minute penalty, so we'll have uh, St. John's with just three seconds to go in the, in the quarter. They're just going to hold it out. Here it is uh, in the open field. We'll see the slash. Not this first man. It'll be coming right from number 20. Okay, Andy DeSico. Here's where the slash will come, right here. And you see how he takes the stick and just wraps it around the waist, and that's where the penalty was. And with three seconds to go, St. John's will be content just to hold the ball, let the uh, clock expire, and then start the fourth quarter with uh, possession. And that's exactly what they do, so it'll be an important possession for the Redmond trailing by four. A goal could bring them right back in the game. We've got 15 minutes to go. And the score, Rutgers 12, St. John's 8. You're watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's Long Island. Hi, I'm Jeremy Dougal. At Apple Bank, we believe that our loyal customers deserve something extra. That's why we've introduced the Apple Bank Family Program. Members of the Apple Bank family receive special benefits like reduced rates on loans, free checking with interest, a low-rate Visa card, a personal family banker, and 24-hour banking. The exciting new Apple Bank Family Program. Join now and feel good about banking again. So there'll be two men up for 29 seconds. A critical point of the game here for St. John's, trailing 12-8. They have scored man-up goals so far, two of them today. Brian Bouget 
will set up behind the cage. How do you defend uh, in this situation six on four? Well, exactly the way Rutgers is right now. We can see it on our screen, perhaps, Barry. They're in a, just a simple box. The four men form a box in front of the goal, and you can see them. They just slide to the ball, and really, when you're playing six on four, there isn't a whole lot that you can do except uh, keep your fingers crossed and pray hard. Boucher looking to find a cut. Oh, man, he passed it by Russell Hilton. And you pray for those kind of mistakes when you're playing two men down. Cantwell raking at it, and it's recovered by St. John's. It'll be a one man down very shortly here. St. John's still six on four, but they better get it up now. Six on five. Cantwell blasts one from that right wing, and it goes wide. However, they had a backer, Johnstone, and it'll still be St. John's ball. Still a man up with 13.59 to go here in the fourth quarter, trailing 12-8. So that missed pass, 34 seconds left in the man up. That miscue on the pass really cost him, Kerry. Yes, it cost uh, precious time is what it really cost, Barry. Here's Bouget. A good defense by Rutgers. Grandinetti, Cantwell's open on that wing. Passes up the shot. Bouget in front, over the stick of Johnstone. Should he have had that one, Kerry? I think the pass was a little bit high, but they, the play was set up beautifully by St. John's. They sent two men around, they decoyed to the strong side, and then they looked back door to Johnstone coming down from the wing on the back side. And it really, the play worked very well. The defense was well over to the ball side, and Johnstone was wide over. I think the feed was just a little bit too high. So it'll be Rutgers' ball. Rinaldi. Drop it over to Morrow, very smart player, the All-American defenseman, big size. Now the penalty to Rutgers is over. The teams are all even. So Rutgers has survived a very difficult situation here and still leading by four with 13-18 to go in the fourth quarter. Critical situation that was that unfortunately St. John's uh, wasn't able to take advantage of. And of course, uh, Rutgers, you got to give them credit. Their defense did a very good job killing the penalties. They have a big defense, especially uh, Eckert and Morrow, well over 6-3. Pritz, a tough guy, 5'10", 190, a bulldog. Here's Tortorella, the lookout in front, and Lobosco. Able to come up with it. Being pressured behind. It's a nice move to get away. It's an area he's improved on. He out worked of the cage. a lot on that over the summer, Barry, to um, improve on his play out of the cage. And, you know, there are situations when he needs it. Like right now, he's out of the cage. He was under pressure, and he did a nice job esca escaping the ride. Junior from West Islip. Coughs up the puck. Luciano Tortorella trying to get it. The defenseman over there was Dolman. Body's Boy. flying in front of the cage there, Barry. <laughs> Good action if you like the physical play. Labosco was caught out of the cage almost midway up to the yep. midfield area, and that's why the uh, defense was just covering up for him. Brennan, number nine, who was hurt earlier in the game, but has come back nicely, back to Labosco. St. John's trailing by four, Garbinowitz. Checked in the midfield over there by the Rutgers defender, Steve Berkeley, number 28, playing on the long pole midfield. Berkeley and Buckley are two fine long pole middies. Hilton having trouble. Oh, what a wrap check. That was an excellent wrap check by number 22 for St. John's, uh, Walt Rabinowitz. But back comes uh, Rinaldi, finds the open man, but it's off of his stick, Luciano. And on the turf, he's able to chase it down just before it went out. And working behind, Hollingsworth is number 19, who made some fine passes to set up Matt Walsh. Those goals figure pretty big right now, Kerry, because the two goals that Walsh scored made it uh, a four-goal game. They sure did, and that's what's, uh, that's, that really is what broke it open, Barry. Fusilli, shot blocked. Something St. John's has done well today. They, Defensemen have blocked a lot of shots. They're taking a lot of shots at the body up top. They're, uh, they, their defensemen are really doing an excellent job eating up those uh, shots. And again, St. John's competitive against some of the better schools at Division I who've had long programs, much longer than the St. John's program. Great double right there by Harold Dahlman. Number 41. This loose ball will roll toward midfield, and alertly Bouget will pick it up. Find uh, Grandinetti. Looking for Rosati. Went off Rosati's stick, Barry. Rosati's still looking for his first goal. The leading scorer of last year just came back from the shoulder surgery, which sidelined him. Here's Moore, who's had a quiet second half. Luciano. 
Back in front, looking for Moore cutting down. You gotta love the fast break action now, Barry. I mean, this is up and down action. And you gotta love this passing. And there's oh, the goal. Tortorella set up beautifully from behind. And Tortorella comes up with the goal. And now it's a back to a five goal lead, 13 to eight. That could be a crusher. Tom Hayes' club leading by five with 10 8 to go. That really has got to hurt St. John's. Uh, but then, you know, that's where the action really was. And here's where we'll see the goal. There's the feed from behind the cage. Tortorella wide open. Uh, almost takes a penalty perhaps after the uh, after the shot. But here's another look at it. The feed will go behind the cage. Number 33 uh, making that. That was Lou Vasili. And you don't see him getting involved behind the cage too much, uh, Barry. And he may, gets a nice assist. Looks up top to uh, number 17, Pete Tortorella. You know, Kerry, in this day and age in lacrosse where you have almost face-off specialists, guys like a Kenny Sherman who just come out there and take face-offs like, uh, like a Corella for, for Hofstra. To have a player like Fusilli who's big and strong and also can play the game and do what he did, and he does score a whole lot of goals, that's a tremendous uh, help, like an Andy Krause of Garden City. And even, even Krause, uh, as good as he is, he comes off after the face-off for the most part. Fusilli is really probably one of the few midfielders who face off who stay on. In today's game. At the college level. Nice stop. We have a change in goal right now. Muley has replaced Labasco in goal, I believe. Let me check. My, no, it's still Sal Labasco. Let me check that. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yep, it is Labasco. And he made a nice save on a shot in close just moments ago from David Cunningham, number nine, who broke down on the crease. He's made some nice saves, Labasco, and then he's had some unlucky ones that have hit off his stick, Barry. I think two or three of them have gone in. And those, uh, you know, those are the kind that hurt. Tortorella, his second of the uh, game, 14 to the season on that last goal from Fusilli. Fusilli's third assist. So there we're talking about uh, his other parts of his game, 4.52 the time of the goal. There's John Schmunk way out of the goal, giving uh, giving another outlet pass to the to the clear. Schmunk hasn't been very busy here in the uh, second half, Kerry, giving up just the uh, two goals. Game was 8-6 at halftime. Rutgers leading by two. Opened up a 12-8 lead. They now lead it 13-8. Schmunk taking it over. And again, there's something you don't really you, know, you see rarely is a, a goalie taking it over the midfield yes. and giving it off. Here's Walsh with a look, nice look in front. Naslonski scores with a lefty shot. Well, his family will be proud. Jimmy Naslonski coming up with the goal, that hard left-handed shot. The young man from Farmingdale. And I guess Farmingdale's going to be awfully good again this year, although they lost players like a Jimmy Naslonski. Well, yes, I'm sure they will. And here's, uh, here's Naslonski. He gets a nice feed. Again, he'll take it with his left hand. Here he comes with the left shot. And it hits the body of Labasco and goes in. Again, that's the kind of unfortunate luck that uh, St. John's has had. But you got to give credit again. Rutgers is creating those opportunities, and uh, that's what wins your game. Kerry, we haven't seen the third midfield unit on with Mike Uruso out there. We may get a look at him, and we all know him from Sachem High School out in Suffolk County. Freshman who's already scored three goals, and he's their backup faceoff man. Let's see if they give him a chance to face off a little bit. But it's still Fusilli. Uh, Let's see if it is. Yep, it's still Fusilli. No, nope, oh. Yoruso is there, number 37. So he did get a chance. prognosticator here, Barry. <laughs> That's twice I've, I've uh, called something before. Naslonski, by the way, his ninth goal from Walsh at 547 as the two Long Islanders combine to give Rutgers a six-goal lead, 14-8. to eight. But St. John's has possession here. Speaking of Long Islanders, Garbinowitz, number 22, working it outside. Johns has recruited some good freshmen this year. Garbinowitz going to the cage and firing it wide. In fact, the backup goalie for Rutgers is a Long Island to carry, and I think you may have played against him with your Deer Park club, Kyle Kirst, who played for Huntington High School. Yes, he is from Long Island. Uh, we, didn't, uh, we haven't played Huntington in a number of years, but we did scrimmage against them uh, when Kyle was in the goal. We'll ask you about your Deer Park club as uh, lacrosse in Suffolk County is underway. You played recently. And uh, how did you fare? Well, our last game, uh, unfortunately, we went down to a sudden death overtime and losing to Copeg. Uh, that was our last uh, our last game on Friday of last week. Okay, Kerry, again, Ward Melville appears to be the dominant team, I guess, in Suffolk. But we'll get a prediction from you and uh, some of the other clubs as we watch the action here. St. John's, Johnstone dropping it off. Garbinowitz has it checked. Eckert trying to come up with it with a long pole. Nice job. And St. Rutgers. Clearing the ball effectively here, Kerry. Yes, they are. Good look. And they may even get the break, even off that miss, that miss pass. All right, Walsh. But the pass is behind number one over there, Chris Wagner, out of Bridgewater, New Jersey. 
A lot of those players from Bridgewater, so they must have a fine program down there. St. John's on the fast break and a good save in close, stopping that time. Um, Russell Hilton looking for his fifth goal. Hilton has four of the St. John's six goals. John Schmunk did a nice job smothering it. Whoa, he takes a high hit, high. I'm surprised they didn't call a penalty on that one. He took it, looked like it was up high in the, into the mask. And the little guy, Russell Hilton, was the guy that threw that hit. I guess he was a little frustrated on that last attempt. And a slash has been called at number 43, Jerry Farrell, I believe, of St. John's. We have a timeout taken right here. And we'll have a stoppage in play. Kerry, as we look at the uh, high school lacrosse picture in Suffolk, if, uh, we'll be back and we'll talk about that in just a moment. We've got a timeout right now, 7.19 to go. And with Rutgers leading St. John's. Rutgers has a single season assist record, Barry and Carry of 54 back in 1973. He is number two on the all time assist record with 120, and he's their fourth leading all time score with 177 points. That picture is a lot different than what John Donowski looks like now coaching the Hofstra sidelines. Barry? Well, I guess he could still score a few goals and set up a few uh, because that Hofstra team's been scoring a lot of goals this year, uh, Kerry, and uh, he believes in offense. And Hofstra came back nicely after getting beaten by Adelphi with a couple of good wins. In fact, they're playing tonight at home. I think they're playing uh, Delaware tonight at Hofstra Stadium. Man-up situation here for Rutgers. Farrell in the box for one minute. And they have already converted on their man-up situation so far today very effectively. They're three for seven. And looking to up their lead. They lead 14 to eight here. They're patient now. More moving it. Tortorella. Luciano. Here's Moore, who played very well in the first half. They've got Doug Beeler in there, number 22, has that hard outside shot. And Rinaldi, who playing down on the crease. They have two men down on the crease. They look in front. Oh, perfect setup and a great fake. And a beautiful goal scored by Andy DeSico as he drew the goalie up with a fake and then popped it right by him. Well, Andy DeSico uh, was standing all alone, wide open on the crease, one-on-one uh, -on -one with Labasco, and he gave him the head fake high, and then he went down low on him. And you can't, you can't do anything as a goalie on those. And here you see DeSico wide open. What happened was uh, really Rutgers just spread out their offense on the man up, and here's uh, the, uh, that left DeSico wide open on the crease, and he faked high, went down low, and of course, uh, Labasco did everything he could to try and stop the shot. So Rutgers four for eight man up against uh, St. John's, and the lead right now for the Scarlet Knights is 15 to eight. The Seco second of the game, 18 to the season at 8:28. And Mike Yaruso taking the face off for Rutgers, number 37. And Kerry, we saw him play last year in the uh, semifinals that we televised on the LIS, and he was a fine player for Seichu. An uh, all-county performer and getting some playing time. Having trouble that time was the defenseman for Rutgers. A look out in front, and a goal scored by David Graham, the youngster from Yorktown High School, who was a converted goalie, hasn't scored since early in the season. He had three goals early, and he comes up with a goal here. And he got he got off a nice shot against, uh, against John Schmunk. I think uh, the defense right now on uh, Rutgers just, um, they made the mistake, and I think St. John's did a nice job capitalizing on that. Here's the replay, and we'll watch the mistake, perhaps, by the defenseman, and I think here's where it falls out of his, uh, his stick. That was uh, the All-American, Mark Moreau, and he doesn't make him too often, but when he does, you've got to take advantage of it, and that's exactly what St. John's did. Feed came from Hilton, and he looked right up, and John Schmunk stepped up on him, but uh, put it right by him, and Moreau did the smart thing, too. I don't know if you caught that, Barry. Moreau backed up uh, Schmunk as he stepped up and into the goal. Graham, six from Hilton, 8.50 the time, and the score now 15-9. St. John's came up with that ball off the faceoff, but they lose it right now. And uh, Rutgers pushing it up quickly. Lou Fusilli. Over to Matt Walsh, getting a lot of playing time here in the second half. Work it behind nicely. DeSico out to Graham. Or check that to Cunningham, nine. On the wing, DeSico hit the pipe. Beeler hits the pipe again on the uh, short side here. I'll tell you, Rutgers has taken a whole lot of shots, Barry. They must, they had 28 by the halftime. They must be up uh, somewhere in the area of 45 shots by now, I would guess, easily, maybe close to 50 shots on uh, on St. John's. Lobosco shaking his head a little bit over there, Kerry says, hey, I've been in a shooting gallery right here. 46 shots taken uh, by Rutgers. Not a bad guesstimate. <laughs> Pretty good, Kerry Gluck. As we watch Walsh looking for a hat trick, rolls it through the crease. 
They'll call that a shot, and it'll still be Rutgers ball. A Rutgers Scarlet Knights trying to improve their record to five and three. They have uh, beaten Princeton, their only uh, really good victory. Draggy picking up that loose ball, Andrew Draggy. And he'll throw it cross field. Off that was a dangerous pass field. cross field too, Barry. All right, Kevin Casey tried to get it 47. That's a tough pass to catch with that big pole cross field. Especially when you hear someone coming in on you like a herd of uh, <laughs> wild, uh, wild elephants. And they have some big boys, this Rutgers team. Goes out of bounds. It'll still be Rutgers ball. But don't forget our next uh, telecast will be a high school telecast, Suwanaka High School. Who at one point, what was it, Kerry, 91 games? They had the all-time record until one of the upstate schools broke that record of going 91 games without a loss. They'll be playing against JFK Belmore. And we'll have that for you next week on the LIS. And I believe that uh, that was West Genesee who broke that record, Barry. They had a tremendous uh, win streak upstate from the Syracuse area. Great check. That was number 23 for Rutgers. Steve Lockler put an excellent check on uh, St. John's uh, long pole. Well, the second midfield unit hasn't scored a whole lot for Rutgers. That we had talked about as being one of the turning points in the game. But actually, their uh, extra attack people have come up with goals like Matt Walsh and uh, Jim Naslonski. And that sort of uh, has hurt uh, uh, Rutgers here, uh, has hurt St. John's a little bit. Well, that, you know, uh, that shows, uh, you know, one of the things I, that uh, we see is one of the strong points of Rutgers is their depth. They have excellent depth, very strong depth at the attack, and they've got good depth on uh, defense. So, uh, I mean, here's where it's coming through and showing it's, uh, showing their strength. And, of course, Bregonaldi has had a fine game. Now looking for transition. This is Casey, 47, with the ball. Defenseman, sophomore out of uh, Chaminade High School. Good stop in close that time by Schmunk. Excellent job by John Schmunk. Held his ground well, followed it, concentrated on the ball, kept his stick right up. Aslansky dropping it off to play out in front. Walsh checked hard, and that may be a penalty on Billy Snyder. Yeah, they're going to call a push on Snyder from behind. No, no possession, so it'll just be a loose ball. Uh, they'll give uh, they'll give the ball back to Rutgers. But at midfield, Barry, there is an offsides called against St. John's, so they will be man down for 30 seconds. Here's the save Labosco just made. Deflects the ball as he dives for it, and there's the push from behind on on um, on Walsh. So that just gave the ball back, but we also had, an, had a penalty, an offsides call against St. John's at midfield, so it'll be a 30-second man up for Rutgers. Credit and assist, by the way, to Luciano on that last Rutgers goal. Scored by DeSico. So those of you scoring at home. Well, Rutgers closing in on their average of 17 goals a game. They've scored 15 today. They lost 9-6 in their last game down at Towson State in Baltimore on Saturday. Beeler scooping it up. Here's Rinaldi. Oh, hit, the, hit pipe. the pipe. That's the third pipe they've hit. Moore, nice little pass over to Beeler. Rinaldi will try again. He misses the cage. Rinaldi has taken the most shots on the club, as you might expect. And let's see, his uh, shooting percentage is pretty good. He should have a very high shooting percentage, Barry, because most of his shots are in pretty tight on the goalie, and they like to look for him on the crease area. Moore cranks it up, and he scales that one wide. And we'll get substitutions right now for Rutgers. Five different players coming in on the offense here. We'll have to go to our scorecard here, Kerry. Checking into the ball game, number 19 for Rutgers, M.G. Hollingsworth. And now we get a timeout anyway, taken by Rutgers. But Tommy Hayes was telling me before the game, Kerry, that, hey, in the fourth quarter, they've been involved in so many close games, and the losses that they've had to Johns Hopkins, to Navy in particular, they've been right in these games, and in the fourth quarter, they've been badly outscored, and they've taken a lot of shots. They outshoot the opponents, but it hasn't gone in. Here today, they haven't needed too many in the fourth quarter because they opened up a pretty decent lead, but uh, fourth quarter's kind of hurt them all year. Well, you know, they have uh, they have played some tough teams in the fourth quarter is where they where their teams that are really strong begin to wear you down a little bit with uh, with the numbers that they have, the Hopkins and the Navy. They, you know, those guys, uh, they really run all day. And I, and I can see perhaps how that could cause to create a problem for the, for the Rutgers team. The, despite the fact they have good depth on the attack, the midfield area uh, where they uh, feel the second midfield's got to carry a little bit more of the load, 
Uh, and if you can turn off Rinaldi on the first midfield, you might be able to pull away from uh, Rutgers. Kerry, the two Long Island teams are still ranked in the uh, top 15. Hofstra is ranked number 13 and Adelphi number 15. And speaking of Adelphi, we'll see them in action in a couple of weeks as they take on the number nine team, Harvard. It'll be a big event at Adelphi. It'll be homecoming. And we hope that uh, a lot of you Adelphi lacrosse fans will be out there for that one. But Adelphi, I happen to see the Adelphi Hofstra game, and they were a marvel that day. Uh, Greg Purdy, the midfielder from Australia, had a sensational game. And along with the Ray brothers, they totally dominated Hofstra, winning all the loose balls, and uh, they won big, and they're having a pretty good season. They lost to Syracuse and lost the other day, but they're having a good year. They are having a very good year. After uh, last year's uh, disappointing season, I think uh, Dr. Hardy's team is getting off to a very good start this year. And I'm sure they're really, you know, if you talk a little bit about the rankings, I'm sure they would like to see themselves ranked higher. They beat Hofstra, and Hofstra's ranked ahead of them. And then on the other hand, Hofstra says, well, wait a minute, guys, we beat Virginia, and they're ranked 10th, and we're ranked 13th with the same identical record. You know, so uh, you got to put a, you know, some, you know, tongue-in-cheek with, uh, with those rankings, I would say. A little politics. In fact, I think Mike Candell, writing in Newsday, had a comment about that recently, the fine sports writer. We're down now to 12, make that 2.31 to go here in the fourth quarter. And Rutgers holding a commanding 15-9 lead. Rutgers will put the ball in play. They've made a lot of substitutions. And we'll try to keep you posted on the players uh, here in the ballgame right now for Rutgers. Matt Hayden, number 12, on attack. Flag is thrown on St. John's. As number 33, Lufia Silly, hobbling a little bit as it was checked. Based on the way he's hobbling, I would think it was probably going to be a, a slash, but it really is apparently a, a push, a 30-second technical foul called against St. John's. Daniel McEnroe, the freshman John's from East Iceland, heading off. McEnroe. He's a very aggressive player, which you might expect coming out of East Iceland. And known for their football and lacrosse players who are pretty aggressive. Kerry, have you played in East Iceland? Are they in your uh, league? Well, we've, we've had played them in our non-league. They, they are very aggressive. They have, a, they have great athletes over there. Dan McEnroe is just an example of some of the athletes that they do have. Uh, Sal Champy's uh, football program is, uh, does a really great job, and uh, they do a good job getting a lot of those players out for lacrosse, too. All right, man-up situation for Rutgers. They've scored four man-up goals. I believe they're four for eight. Here's Beeler. Watch by Snyder. Rutgers moving the ball around, opening up the offense, circle offense here. Rinaldi. Tortorella. Minute 54 to go. Look in front for Rinaldi, and well, that's like money in the bank. Rinaldi gets the ball in here. Just about most players, Gary, but when they swung it around, they opened the field up, and Rinaldi, who just doesn't need much room to get it off, he was open, and he just put it home. That was exactly correct, Barry. You hit the nail right on the head. They opened up the field as they went to a circle. Here's the feed, and Rinaldi's right in tight, and it doesn't. He's got such a quick stick. Uh, anything that's right there in his stick is going to be uh, redirected right towards the goal, and that's just about all that he does. He redirects uh, the, the pass towards the goal area. St. John's uh, made a substitution, Barry, into the goal. Uh, I'm sorry, Rutgers uh, subbing in the goal. Kyle Kirst is now reported in for Rutgers. Kerry, let me ask you, do the kids say anything to each other when they face off here? Is there much conversation going on, or Rutgers is there any? No, uh, very little, Barry. There really is very little talk. There's probably more talk by attackmen and defensemen on the, uh, you know, in the back where the officials can't hear them, because you got an official right there over you when you're facing off. So there really isn't a whole lot of conversation. Rutgers used Johnny Walsh from Holbrook out of St. Jim High School, a senior, to take the face off there. So so Matt Yaruso, uh, rather Mike Yaruso, fi uh, figuring the footsteps. Rinaldi's fifth goal, by the way, is 21st of the season from Tortorella, 13.08, man up. And those man up goals, uh, very prominent so far today for Rutgers. Five of their 16 have been man up. Had a violation here. Now with a minute 42 to go, it'll be St. John's ball. Number one in the game is Adam Gerber. Out of North Salem, out of uh, South Salem, New York. Playing in midfield for St. John's. Rutgers has had by far the more possession, especially here in the second half. St. John's hasn't had much possession. Bolger over to Hilton, who had those four first half goals carried to keep his club in the game. That was a really nice check. Uh, number 25, uh, Rich Burton for Rutgers, did a good job on Hilton. And coming up with the ball for Rutgers, the new goalie, and that's Kyle Kirst out of Huntington. And they're putting a little bit of pressure on him. Vinny Rosati pressuring the, uh, the youngster from Huntington. Kirst is the, the perfect kind of player to be. They, they love him. His attitude, he knows his job as a backup, but he's a team leader in terms of uh, spirit. 
and uh, he's just a coach's delight to have as a backup goalie, and he can play. He sure can. You know, you, you're not embarrassed putting him on the field at all, Barry. And uh, and it's a, he's the greatest kind of kid that you can put on there when he knows that uh, he accepts that backup role as a junior. Yeah. One of the surprises has been John Schmunk, who did not get much playing time last year with the All-American goalie Gilman. Rutgers played him almost every moment of every game last year in the 8-5 season that they had. But you know what, Barry? I'm, I'll bet you Gilman really taught uh, Schmunk a lot. I mean, he was a freshman last year. And he was, you know, he's standing behind an All-American. You could really learn a lot by just doing that. Look out in front, broken up. And St. John's will clear. Lobosco getting it upfield. This is Casey, 47. We're down to 13 seconds to go. Don't forget to stay tuned for our Apple Bank presentation of our outstanding player of the game and a chat with a winning coach coming up. Time running out, two seconds, one. Clock now will expire. The whistle blows, and Rutgers has defeated St. John's for the sixth time in their all series. Six games to none, but I'll tell you, again, St. John's, uh, maybe they don't have the depth here, but uh, this game is history. But uh, there you see coach uh, of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Got to be pretty happy with this club bouncing back from the loss uh, down at Towson State. Great picture right at midfield, Barry, just in quickly in closing. Great picture. John Schmunk coming out and embracing his, you know, the back of Kyle Kirst. Just shows the camaraderie and just shows a good feeling that those two goalies have for each other. So both clubs coming up with uh, good efforts, and we'll be back with our Apple Bank Player of the Game and a chat with the winning coach in just a moment. You've been watching College Lacrosse on Cablevision's Long Island Sports Network. Yeah. I wonder if I can get a car loan. 